Hey, uh, welcome, Fudd. Thanks for joining us tonight, man. I'm happy to be here. Good, good. Well, I'm glad you're here because we need your help. Oh, um, yeah, sure. Well, whatever you need. Good. I'm glad you said that, man. We've been going over our viewer stats, and Hazel is just not pulling the numbers he promised us. According to our demographics, he's pulling in listeners from some small city in Ohio, Dayton or somewhere like that, but a bunch of daft punk music listeners. I don't know. I don't, I don't get it, but, uh, but me and Easy have been talking, and since Hazel's on vacation this week, we figured, you know what, this would be a good time to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. So our question is this. Hmm. What's it going to take to pull you away from just some guardians and get over here with me and Easy? Uh, oof. Just laying it on right away. Um, well, I mean, I'd like to help. Um, I'm super loyal to Russell, you know. Hey, Fudd. Huh? Maybe this will change your mind. How about some free Dallas Cowboys tickets? You know what? I'm sorry, guys. I I thought we were doing a podcast. I'm I'm cut it, cut. cut. I'm sorry, guys. I can't, I can't do this. <laughs> Hazel's actually pulling great numbers in. Uh, he's putting us through the stratosphere. Sorry, Easy. I know you want me to do this. I just can't do it, man. I'm sorry. Man, that ain't fair. You promised some payback. What the fuck is going on here? I didn't mean to mix you up in this, man. This is kind of a little family squabble here, but uh, I'm sorry, Easy. I can't do it, man. Well, this is some amateur bullshit. Guardian down. Hey, what's up, everybody? And welcome to episode five of Guardian Downcast. We are three dads that talk about anything Destiny, gaming, and entertainment. I'm your host, The Gator. And I'm joined by one of my co-hosts tonight, Easy. Hazel is on vacation this week. How's it going, Easy? Good evening, sir. All right, man. Well, to start things off, I wanted to introduce our guest of the show. He's known as one of the co-hosts of Just Some Guardians podcast. And, in my opinion, the most underrated funny man in our community, Mr. Elmer Fudd. How you doing tonight, Fudd? I'm wonderful. That's uh, that's quite the title you've given me. Um, I'm touched deeply, very, very deeply. Oh God! Welcome, I knew, I knew, Fudd. I Welcome. knew I knew it was going to get weird. Hey, let me just go over an overview of tonight's show. We're going to start off by going in for a deep dive of Mr. Elmer Fudd. We're going to catch up on the past week. Talk about the latest news from Bungie. Easy is going to give us a short recap of Gamescom in Germany right now. And of course, our patented segment we call the speed run. Then finally, we will answer any Twitter Discord questions from our community and add Guardian Down Cast Spotify playlist. It is another jam packed night, guys. I think we have 40 plus questions tonight. So uh, let's get started. <laughs> All right, so let's get to know our guests a little bit more. Fudd, tell us a bit about yourself, man. Oh, God. That's open and broad. <laughs> <laughs> Go as deep um, as you want, man. You leave it wide open like that. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm just another dude that's an idiot. He's on the internet trying to do things and create content and watch himself and try to improve and, you know, just become a better person. <laughs> Don't get emotional <laughs> on me. Stay with us, Fudd. Stay with yeah, us. Yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> hey, Fudd. What got you into gaming? Ooh. Um, it helped. I think I've answered this one recently, so it actually helps a lot. Um, I was, God, I must have been five. I was watch, walking through the kitchen, and my brother was at the computer, and he was playing Wolfenstein 3D. Ooh. And I looked over, and I was like, hey, uh, what are you doing? Like, shooting <laughs> Nazis? I was like, that sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and it was just kind of kind of hooked on from there. I sat down at five years old and shot Nazis in the face, and it just kind of rolled from there. We got a uh, we got a Sega Genesis uh, right back when you could rent consoles from game or from Best Buy. Oh, that's that awesome! Blockbuster. That's a awesome. Blockbuster. Yeah, I, I was, was going to say to rent stuff from Blockbuster. I thought it was yeah. Blockbuster. Rented a Nintendo sixty four, and I was like, nice. what? And then a neighbor had it and the, like the 3D graphics and everything. I was like, uh, the future is now, old man. And it just kind of <laughs> led forward from there. PlayStation 2, uh, Xbox 360, and the PS4, and 
PC gaming in between there, and now I'm mostly mating on PC now. Nice. Very huh? cool. So PS2 and N64, which one would you choose over the other? I felt like that was a pivotal point in my childhood gaming. That's when stuff really, really took off. Mm. Um, or I'm sorry, not PS2, PS1 and N64. If you had to go back, which one would you stick with? Well, I never had the PS1. Oh, okay. So, okay. so the 64 would stay. I, I actually, I went from um, in home, I went from a Sega Genesis to the PS2. Like that was the gap I had. <laughs> Golly, yeah. Wow, this is great. I skipped the Sega generation altogether. I went when I once I got a PS1, it was like I was a Sony fanboy forever. Mm. Never made that. Oh, yeah, I hear that. Well, hey, speaking of games, uh, what got you into Destiny? And do you have like a favorite moment you want to mention? I'll tell the short version because it's a pretty, it's a girthy story. Okay. Um, but anyone that doesn't know, uh, when Destiny was first being announced. Um, I'd watched some trailers and stuff. Didn't look that amazing to me. My best friend, Nick, who used to be a co-host on the show, but due to time restraints, whatever, he couldn't join us anymore. Um, but we met playing World of Warcraft forever ago, and he flew out to come visit me so we could meet face-to-face -face to make sure I wasn't getting catfished, right? <laughs> oh, wow. And, um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, back up, back up, back up. Oh, yeah, yeah. What, what, what? Is, what is catfish? Are you serious? I I don't know if I know. <laughs> okay. Texas, he so is from Texas. Texas. Yeah, catfishing is big in Texas. Is everything's <laughs> bigger. So catfishing is when you meet someone on the internet who you think they're one thing. Say, I met this girl online who's like 24 and very attractive and into me. I'm going to go meet her and we will be married and live happily ever after and have 18 kids. And then you show up and it's an 80-year-old man. <laughs> <laughs> so... Not 80 kids then? No. <laughs> no. We, all, we only had seven together. Oh, okay. That's what they, were, they were beautiful years I'll cherish for the rest of my life. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> but so he flew out to visit me the week Destiny was launching. And so for fun, he changed his um, pre-order pickup to the GameStop near my house. So we could like, you know, go and do the whole, you know, we're gaming friends. We can be in the line together and whatnot. Um, so unknown to me like a month prior he'd gotten with my wife and they split the cost of the ps4 and destiny bundle and so i'm just standing in line then all of a sudden they throw the console at me and they're like here you go kid and i was like uh what what huh me this is what and so yeah i was just gifted it out of nowhere and uh wow. started playing it because i felt like i had to but then instantly was hooked because it was better than i thought it looked in the trailers <laughs> Dude, that's that's a great story that's awesome man. yeah, yeah. Well, uh, do you have like a favorite gaming moment from Destiny? It could be Destiny 1 or 2. Ooh. You know, I mean, there's a lot of really amazing moments. But honestly, um, so I'm a hardcore Titan. I just oh. want to get that out there. Very important. <sighs> Hazel will love you. I, I love Hazel. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually started the game as a hunter from launch. When the Sunbreaker Titan was introduced, I saw that trailer and I went, that's fucking me as a person on the screen. And so I think the first time I unlocked that subclass and like he did the, the spinny fire hammer move, I was like, yep, <clears throat> I'm, I'm sold. This is me. And that, that mission on uh, Mercury is mm -hmm. epic. So, epic. so that, good. You know what? I, it's almost as good. I, I felt like I liked that mission the best out of all three, but that warlock music is yes. epic. That's some of the best music the Destiny's produced right there. Is that Warlock Storm Storm Trance or Stormcaller uh, subclass opened? That was great. So, Fud, um, how'd you find this community? Ooh, that's a fun one. Well, s something um, something with who I am now, I guess. So I do like I do some stuff on YouTube. I stream. I have a podcast. All that. St I'm like deep dived into all the content creation. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know Twitch. The Destiny community, anything existed till Destiny 2 launched, um, which is which is quite the hurdle I've gone through since then. Um, D1, I played it with my group of friends, thought it was cool, you know, took breaks when I had to. I didn't know a lot, like half the game existed because I never went online. Like I probably watched a Dado video and just didn't know he was at the time, you know. But so when Destiny 2 was launching, I was like, oh, I'm really excited about this game. I want to learn more. And so I finally looked up a podcast and I think it was probably... I think the first podcast I ever heard was probably like Destiny Community Podcast because it was the first one that popped up. Right, right. Um, and that's when I was like, wait a second. Streaming, Twitch, community? 
like all these words. That's when I deep dove and like learned who everyone was and tried to meet as many people as I could. And I was like, where was this D1? I would have loved it. And I've just, yeah, I've been trying to get into everywhere I can since. I'm, what I'm curious about, other than the cartoon character, what's up with the gamer tag? How did you how did you decide mm-hmm. on Elmer Fudd? So Xbox 360 days, um, Call of Duty COD Four, I think is when I got the 360. Okay. I need to make a gamer tag, and um, my dad was actually watching, and it was one of those like opera things, you know, where Bugs Bunny's all dressed up. As, you know, <laughs> I know that one. And, yeah, and Elmer Fudd's <laughs> over there with his spear and magic helmet, <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, Elmer Fudd, I love this guy, you know, and then I spelt it wrong. Hence the double M double D uh, and it wasn't taken because I spelt it wrong. And that's been my name ever since. I have to mention, I listened to your last episode. It was called remaster my wife. And dude, that was the most genuine episode. It brings me back to the episode where, uh, Jay, AKA gear dad had his wife on his podcast before it unfortunately went away. I don't know what it is, but you can just sense the love, man. You can sense the closeness. And it was such a genuine episode. I I could just relate because I'm the same way with my wife. Uh, your wife well, thank you. can seem to joke around with you. You know, seems to be on the same level as you, which is it was just so awesome to hear. But oh yeah, the one thing that I got from that episode was this, and you guys even said it in your podcast. You started talking to each other, and you're going, you know what? I really didn't know all this about you and gaming. And it takes something like a structured environment, like a podcast, for you to actually sit down with your significant other delve over her gaming past, you know, about her love in the Sims and stuff, which my daughter is a major fan. She's played all of them too. Oh, um, hell yeah. But I just thought that was really cool. Uh, where, you know, in real life, you know, you got kids and life and all the busyness and the noise in your head every day. And it's hard to sit down and actually have a, a long conversation about anything, you know, these mm-hmm. days. So I, I just wanted to comment that that was really nice. How long have you guys been married? Are, are you guys married? I didn't mean to get too personal. You get as personal as you want, man. Okay. Um, yeah, we we are absolutely married. We've been together. Okay, right, quick math. I can't do it. We got married <laughs> in 2011. Okay. So that long. Uh-huh. And we've been together since 06. Do you mind me asking how you guys met? Um, School, actually. Okay. You're both going to college. School, high, high school, sweetheart. Oh, high school. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, really? Oh, that's yeah. kick-ass, dude. And we've, uh, you know, barely made it. I'll tell you what. Y'all definitely know each other. Oh, yeah. I was well, impressed. And, you know, a point you, you were just talking about, it was really interesting because we've attempted the conversation about why she likes playing the older Sims instead of Sims 4, and I've never understood it. Um, so, like, she's attempted to explain it multiple times in, like, passing conversation, mm-hmm. and it just doesn't get across. But like you said, like, having that structured discussion and, like, no distractions, we're forcing the conversation to happen, and it finally clicked. I was like, oh, sweet. Like, one of the cornerstones of the problems we've had in our marriage. <laughs> I, hear you. I understand, man. Well, I mean, you mentioned you were a dad. Do you have a kid, two kids? How many kids? Two. Yeah, two of them. I've got a six-year-old daughter and a two-year-old son. Oh, wow. Fud, I feel yeah. your pain, brother. I've got a seven-year-old and a three-year-old. Whew. He's got two boys. Yeah, wow. You're, you're just one head and really, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's a... It's a hot mess sometimes. It's say that. it's really cool having a boy and a girl though for some reason because they're so different. And you'll as oh, they yeah. as they get older you'll you'll pick up on all those little differences. But no, like seriously, I'll, sorry, real, just real no, quick, no, go ahead. you mentioned that it's just how different the boy and the girl is. Uh-huh. It's just just happened earlier today. I was cuddling with my daughter. We were just talking, you know, and she's just going on about stuff going on in her life, and we're like cutesy talking about stuff and mm-hmm. like talk, I don't know, princess whatever, you know. And like the second she leaves, my son screams and headbutts into my chest. And I was like, yep, these are totally different. (laughs) (laughs) That makes sense. Makes perfect sense. Well, I want to shift gears here a little bit. I want to, I want to ask you kind of a close to home question. I know you've, you've done just some guardians for quite a while now. And, uh, I want to ask you, what is it about podcasting that you enjoy in general? What is it to get you to switch on the go live switch every week? Uh, Ooh, man, that's, uh, that's a multi-layered question there. Well, first and foremost, you know, I started listening to a lot of podcasts at once, once I realized this medium existed. Mm-hmm. And so you kind of, you know, pick up the ambiances of, of, you know, how things work. And I got to the point where I would be trying to talk to them while listening. And I was like, God, maybe I should just do this. And uh, it's funny. Um, it's hard to tell. I have horrible anxiety. Okay. Like, it's bad. And so this has been something I've forced myself to do to help um, myself get over that hurdle. 
So week to week, like I have an attack before like every episode. Really? In fact. Okay. Um, but yeah, it, it's and that and streaming has been thing. I'm like I'm pushing myself to just dive into this stuff to kind of help me in my day to day life. Kind of sure. I don't know. Learn and to work around. It's kind of therapeutic for me in a way, I guess. I, I and then just yeah. meeting people and, and learning more about them. It's just I just love it. I can totally. It's, it's uh, crazy, even though it is about video games it teaches you how to reach out and talk to people and to communicate. It's a different kind of communication, right? Mm. Um, but essentially it's just, it's like we're on the telephone talking, right? It's, we just have a bunch of fancy equipment and we're shooting aliens in the face. Oh, but, speak uh, for yourself. That stuff's not very fancy. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, I think that it, that that's great. That's uh, it's great that you do that. And it's great that you have this platform to help you push you to that next level. That's really awesome. Thank you, man. Yeah. I can just, you know, just meeting people is making, I've made so many, I mean, lifelong friendships to take a line from, I think it was barely ADS. Their latest episode said that but <laughs> it's true. Like, Oh, it's, it's nuts. We, um, me and my wife got to go down to guardian con, which is the most terrifying thing I've done in my life, but I'm just meeting all these people in real life. It was, I mean, it was the coolest thing I've ever experienced. I can relate to your anxiety. I, I struggle with it a lot too, especially when, once my kids left, left college and it was left, you know, the house was empty. That'll happen yeah. someday guys. It's going to happen. And you'll, you'll feel like my day to day life is just so different now. And, uh, you'll, you'll mm -hmm. get, you'll get used to it eventually, but I kind of caught myself doing the same thing where I was answering questions where people are asking on the podcast, like, no, 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 you need to, you need to say this. Why don't you say this about it? And, you know, I talked to myself, people look at me funny while I'm working, but, uh, oh, yeah. you're wrong. That's not what it is. <laughs> so what is this guy talking <laughs> right. to? Uh, you have a co-host, Russell. Uh, how do you how do you know him? Ooh, um, we are also <laughs> high school sweethearts. We um, we met in high school and became just instant friends. We threw like raging, <laughs> rage or halo parties in his basement. I'll tell you what. Oh. Um, but and then kind of once we kind of graduated, we kind of split apart. And then when I got destiny actually this brings it right around i was playing destiny one night and i posted a screenshot on facebook and he reached out and we hadn't talked to each other in probably a couple of years he's like oh my goodness i have destiny and i have no friends to play with we should totally hang out sometime and then that rekindled that friendship and played on from there and then when i you know i was like a podcast would be awesome we all talked about it and that's when we all dove in together wow uh, that's yeah, that's sweet. what are the odds, you know, of something like that happening. Yeah, that's All crazy. Right. I got one final question, and if Easy has any, he can ask okay. him after this. What is the story with your finishing phrase? I was embarrassed. I didn't know your finishing phrase uh, at the end of your podcast. What, what's the story behind that? Is that just something oh, you guys just okay? As another yeah, yeah, you guys just started saying that. Is that a quote from something or? That's actually, um, it's. I was actually thinking about that the other day. On episode two, which is technically episode one, because episode <laughs> one literally melted my old computer. And <laughs> Cavern stories. Yeah, legitly melt. It, there was yeah, it was smoke. It was terrifying. Wow. Um, it was a message from up, up high, I guess. You know, no <laughs> pod. No. I'm just <laughs> so episode two, we had a friend on the show, and we were talking about how we sound dumb, and and he just like blurted that out. He's like, yeah, it's like mutual chaos. Well, like we're just mutual chaos and utter incompetency or something, and we're like. Um, that's fucking brilliant. <laughs> I like it. And it just, it just stuck with ever since I like from the it. beginning. Uh, it's a nice tag tagline. I love it. I, I'm fortunately, it, I'm it sorry. It perfectly I sums it up. I'm, I'm, I'll admit I'm a fairly new listener, so I didn't know that. I was kind of embarrassed when I was on the other night, but I always curious how, how huh. that, how you get, how oh, that came God. about, but, uh, uh, easy. You have any? You have any other questions? I know. I uh, I know. Gator said it earlier, but uh, thanks for joining us tonight. And I, man, I hope you can hang out for the rest of the show. We've got some great stuff to talk about. Guys, I am in a comfortable chair. I have some water. Um, a breeze picked up. I'm cool right. to stay. Well, sounds Sweet. good. Sounds good. All right. Okay, we're going to move on to what we have been watching this week. Fudd, since you're the guest of honor, I'm going to start with you. Ooh, all right, cool. So I have recently discovered the joys of having Netflix on a screen next to me while I game. I know that's a, you know, a pretty rookie thing nowadays. Everyone's doing it. Something Fudd really enjoys 
I don't know why I'm speaking in third person. I really <laughs> enjoy foreign fil- foreign films, like mm-hmm. kung fu shit, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm, right. I love the uh, the choreography, the action scenes, um, the cinematography, like God, some of like the pacing. It's it's a whole thing that could be a whole episode on itself. I won't get into it. Right. But right. I find it really fascinating to watch how movies are made from different parts of the world because it's super different, super fascinating. Sorry. Anyway, uh, a couple movies popped up on here, and um, no one's probably gonna know what they are. Um, but one of them was called Legend of the Naga Pearls. Nope. It was like the super. I don't know, like high fantasy kung fu, you know, kind of thing going on. And the storyline was actually pretty good. Uh, the fight scenes were awesome. The acting was awesome. The CGI was incredible. Um, if you enjoy that kind of movies, like I can give you, hit me up. I'll send you a list of really good, like top quality foreign films, and you can deep dive into it. Yeah, man, I I'm on the same page with you. I went through a phase when like Hero and Crouching Tiger and House of Flying Daggers, all those came out. Excellent cinematography, excellent music, uh, beautiful mm-hmm. art, colors, uh, and just uh, the fighting. The fight scenes were just amazing. Uh, I'm I'm on board. I'm gonna need to hit you up and and get some of those titles. All right, yeah, man, definitely. But yeah, so Legend of the Naga Pearls, like super bright colors, I guess. It was pretty. Pretty up there. And the other one I watched kind of contrasted. I don't know, easy if maybe have you heard of Fourteen Blades? I've seen it, but I have not. I haven't watched a trailer. I haven't really dug into it. What's it about? So, Donnie Yen is in it, who's an incredible actor. Um, anyone on this side of the world that doesn't know who Donnie Yen is, uh, he was the badass um, Force guy from um, uh, Star Wars story. What was that one? Um, Rogue One. Oh, wow. oh yeah. I'm on with the Force. The Force is with me. That guy. Hmm. Okay. Incredible actor. Um, so he's in this movie. So it's like a, you know, period piece, China, and um, he's on the run, but it's it's kind of a generic kung fu movie, but there's a lot of, I didn't catch it like halfway through, there's a lot of like American Western, like cinema themes throughout the whole thing. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah, I didn't catch it till like halfway through. I was like, oh my gosh, they're doing this as a Western. It was like, it was so cool. But incredible fight scenes, some of the ideas behind how the weapons work and, and things, it was outstanding the music top notch cinematography choreography oh my god it was watch that movie what what was it again 14 daggers 14 blades 14 blades got you those are the those are the two big ones um and i watched it's it's called ice man it's got donnie in also but it's an awful movie (laughs) it's really bad (laughs) he's an ancient chinese warrior that gets dropped in modern tokyo that already sounds terrible it's so bad um, well, it's one of those movies that's so bad it's good. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like the B acting. I watched the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah gotcha. So, I mean, if you're down to just, you know, waste your brain and laugh a lot because it's trying to be serious but it doesn't work, <laughs> Iceman. Gotcha. Sometimes movies like that are good when you're just gaming and you don't want to be too involved in what you're watching. Like back. Well, no, it's, it's, it's so bad you have to be involved. Oh, I got gotcha. <laughs> you. Know what I, mean? I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I don't think I've been more intently into a movie in a long time for the wrong reasons. But that's basically all I've watched. I don't, you know, don't have a movie pass or anything. <laughs> right. So uh, for me, I didn't watch anything. As you know, as you both know, I was on vacation this week or this past 10 days. Uh, uh, the family and I flew out to Colorado, spent a couple days in Denver. Yeah. How'd, how'd that go, man? Uh, How'd that go? Good. I believe you didn't great. say hi to me. You loser. No, I didn't know. I, I didn't even know. I didn't know either. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> whatever. Nice. I, I don't. I don't know where I was going to go with that. Anyway, funny story. I, funny now, but it was not funny at the time. Oh, so, goodness. have you seen Family Vacation? Oh I'm yes. Sure, everybody's seen Family Vacation. I had a Family Vacation moment this week. So I, it's me, my wife, two small children. In nine bags. And uh, so, because we're gone for forever, right? We land in Denver. We go pick up a Tahoe because we're going to we're gonna need it for family and whatnot. I pull out of the budget rental car place. So, are you familiar with the Denver airport, FUD? I'm oh, sure yeah. That, yeah. absolutely. Right. So, I pull out of the, the budget parking lot. And you kind of pull out like on a freeway. It's not a major mm-hmm. interstate, what? but it's like a... 50 mile an hour four lane highway right yeah the one i went to I was like out. it's like so far away from the airport they have to take a they have to take a bus to get to it right yeah you have yep. to, yes you gotta take a freaking bus they, to get there 
Yeah, so. they have like a state's worth of land out there. Mm-hmm, in the airport. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we pull out on that main road. I hit the gas and I hear zoop. <laughs> you would never know what that zoop was. I know what that zoop is. Was. The tailgate flies <laughs> open and my suitcase oh my is god. flying out on that freeway. Oh my god. Like three cars run over it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> wow. Like, so I end up pulling over like 400 yards away because that's like the, the closest place I could actually get the car oh my god. off of the road. Yeah. I'm running back like I'm sprinting down the free or sprinting down the, the side of the road. I would have paid money to see that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, dude. dude. Underwear, hair products, <laughs> dress shoes. Like my suitcase is oh my wide god. open and there's just it looks like a bomb went off in the oh middle of the god. street. I swear. Oh so luckily <laughs> luckily one of the budget bus drivers like pulled all the way out and block the traffic from coming. So I spent like three minutes just gathering all my stuff. Longest three minutes of your life, I bet. I bet that was the longest three minutes of your life. Holy crap. Holy like, everyone's like, driving by staring. It's that panic <laughs> moment. This guy. <laughs> I don't know how anybody didn't stop. Like, my suitcase got hit wow. by a car. Like, it destroyed it. So really? I'm like, how that car didn't stop and... It's beyond because it. anyway. Was it soft? No was it soft? <laughs> was it soft luggage or hard hard luggage? Hard luggage. We have hard luggage. Like it's oh, like wow. Uh, it's a it's a cow pack. I don't know if you oh. know what, anything about luggage, but it's a cow pack, and it, it's it's uh, I don't know five feet by two three feet, and it's wow. hard luggage. Oh like, I mean, God. you couldn't kick your way through it. So that car had to be anyway. hurt. That car had to be messed oh, up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sure. Oh my God. So, um, anyway, uh, that started off my vacation and, well, the uh, is staring at you, right? <laughs> Jeez. So anyway, uh, but we spent a couple of days in Denver, had a good time. Like I said, we went up to the mountains, but I really didn't watch anything. I, it, it, Fudge, you probably understand when you're on the go with kids, yeah. TV, gaming, like it's all something that you can, yeah. I mean, you can barely even look at your phone, yep. much oh, less yeah. do anything else. I mean, you're, you're, it's go, go, go. But that was my week. What about you, uh, uh, <laughs> Mr. Movie Pass? How the hell do I top I, that? Holy uh, shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I feel like Someone I just broke got into my house. <laughs> yeah. So hold on a sec. I got to come up with a story. Hold on. Let me, let me consult my, uh, my imagination. Just here. my green ties. It was the weirdest thing. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I do have a movie pass and I did see two more movies this oh. week. One, you have no idea. One, you're probably going to like the other one. You may not like it. It depends on what your taste in movies is. But the first one I saw was good boys. It's about the young kids that, uh, just it's like a youthful oh, it's like a good? it's like a mix of youthful innocence like a goonies but mix it with a, oh, would mix boys. it mix it with like an irreverence of an r-rated yeah. movie yeah, and it's was it was holy it it, it has its, it had its good points and it's kind of slow points but overall i mean let's see the the uh, critics gave it 79 percent, and the audience gave it 88 percent on on rotten tomatoes so it was it was definitely entertaining <laughs> it was definitely entertaining don't don't get gear, Dad. <laughs> Started on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> oh, really? Well, we'll have to ask him uh, if that he ever gets on our show. Some, some opinions, I'll tell you. What. <laughs> I bet he does. <laughs> uh, well, okay, not the, not, but it was, it was, it was really, it's really weird how they can mix that that youthfulness of the kids with the the irreverence. It's like Bad Santa, you know. It's kind of like that kind of. Movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's very, yeah. very funny. If your if your mind if your mind goes there, it's funny as hell. But uh, the other movie I saw wasn't quite so funny. It was called uh, "Where'd You Go, Bernadette." It's it's an in, it's an indie movie. Uh, I got forty seven percent critics and seventy six from the audience. And this is more of a heavy hearted movie. It's about an architect uh, who has a life crisis. Uh, she gives up on her craft, and she's a she's one of these true genius people who can see something in the beauty and things, and she can make the just the most awesome buildings. But it's how she becomes a recluse. And she has a daughter, and her daughter is everything. It's her life. And she's a, such a menace to society that <laughs> her and her neighbor just go at it. And it's, it's, you'd have to see it. it it's, it's kind of serious, but it, it has funny moments in it. But it was more of a, I mean, I kind of teared up at the end. It was really, really touching, you know, about people finding their way in life and, and finding their true purpose. And moving on to Prime Video, I finally finished the uh, movie that Hazel recommended, movie, the show that, Hazel recommended the boys 
on Amazon Prime. Hey, hey, don't spoil anything. I'm not gonna spoil I'm, it. I'm gonna say I'm I did. Really gonna get to it. I did see the ending. Go ahead. And it was a wow moment. Yeah, that's all I'll say. It was you're like holy crap! I can't wait for the next season. So and yeah, that that's what I hear from everybody yeah, is yeah. that the the only downfall to this season is yeah. that it ended. <laughs> well, yeah, and it doesn't keep going. That's what yeah. sucks. I think it's. Might have to pick that up. I think it's like six episodes. It's not a lot of episodes, but they're really good. I mean, they cover a lot in those six episodes. But uh, I did, do, uh, according to Laz and and Hazel from last week, they talked about The Expanse being on Prime Video, and I started watching that. I realized I watched like two or three seasons of it already a long time ago, and it was really good. And then now I guess the new season's coming out finally. They finally shot the uh, latest season. So because it's been so long since I've seen it, I had to go back and I'm back at the beginning again, starting to watch it and figure, realize what the hell's going on. And then I'll be watching the new season soon. What's it about? It's a sci- it's sci-fi. Like a it's minute. it's sci- it's a sci-fi movie about how the Earth is going to crap. It's a lot like Destiny. How we uh, moved out of Earth and have colonized on Mars, and there's different factions of people who believe certain ways of doing things. It's it it is very much kind of hmm. like Destiny. It's, think of it as more of a not such a happy Destiny. You know what I'm saying? So there's a there's a lot of uh, villainy and a lot of you know bad guys and is good there people. um is there space magic? Of course, there's always space magic. Space magic is everywhere. It's in the tree. <laughs> the rock. You just have to use your imagination. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's move on. Great guy. Great job, guys. Uh, let's talk about our goals in gaming this week. Fud, let's start with you. Ooh, goals in gaming. Well, you know, what you been what have you well, been playing? Um Well, a goal I had, um, so this last week um was the solos mode in Apex Legends. Mm. And that is a game that I'm very into. And so um, my goal was to discover if really it's my teammates who make me lose or myself. Um, <laughs> spoiler alert. It's, it's the same person. It's me. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, wait a minute. Now, I've heard, I've heard some things about this. I got to ask you. I've heard All that right. there's buddies teaming up and trying to get on the same servers and going like 3v1. Is this true? Where people are like... I've- I don't know, I've I've seen I've seen word of it on the internet, but I haven't really run into it very much. Like there's times where like you'll die, and you're like I swear those guys are working together, but they just happen to both see you at the same time. But I really haven't ran into that too often. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to interrupt you here, Fud. Uh, Hazel sent me a DM. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. We forgot to ask him how what, how his week's gone, man. Uh, all right, Hazel, since you're in there in our chat now, what do you what what do you watch this week? What what you been doing? Really? Man. Huh. Yeah. I'll be damned. Yeah, hentai hentai is art. I agree. Oh man. I never even who, knew. Who is Hazel man? Dude, did you fall off a mountain or something while you're in Colorado? Hey Hazel's our is our co host, dude. He's on vacation. I didn't I say it at the beginning? Man, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. I, mean, I right. know you missed last week, but like, it hasn't been that long. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, Fudd. I, I, Hazel interrupted me. I'm sorry. Uh, what were you, you were saying that you were, uh, you were playing the solos and I, and I interrupted you. What were you? Oh, no, that's, <laughs> I'm going to pretend it's fine. Okay. Uh, I'll just swallow that in. Hold on. <laughs> okay. We're fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love you, man. No, like, I actually did a lot better than I thought I would. I, I never won, but I had some. I had quite a few games where I popped off and had quite a few kills. So I was, I was feeling pretty good about myself. Good. Um, so that was really fun. Because in the squads mode, you know, you you don't kill someone; they're downed, and then you have to finish them or swipe the squad before everyone's dead. So it's super satisfying to just shoot someone till their health's gone, and then just immediately like they're eliminated, and that sound pops. And it's it feels so good. The adrenaline starts pumping, doesn't it? <laughs> mm-hmm. And then, um, I mean, this is, is this just goals or is this general what we've been playing? What have you been playing, dude? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so if anyone, uh, as of time of recording this, the, um, the out, al- the PS4 alpha for Call of Duty Modern Warfare launched today. Did it really? And so I jumped in there for a little bit and, um, I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited. It really? Felt really good. See, that's, I come from that background. What, what, what do you, what's excited about it? What, what makes you excited? So, you know, a lot of issues I've had with, with Call of Duties recently, um, you know, they're too bright. They've had the same engine for years. It feels like the same thing over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. They used to used to have dedicated servers and they went to peer to peer, kind of like what Destiny does. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and so this one came out and they and they announced, you know, one cross play, huge. Wow. Um, campaign again, new engine, um, new direction and dedicated servers. Phew. And so from all that, I was like, all right, this is worth looking into. It looks like it's not, you know, insane as fast paced as it has been. It, it really honestly felt like old school, like really modern warfare, modern warfare two even. So it sounds to me like they're just going all out since this is one of the what well what they've said is one of the last of the Call of Duties. Yeah, yeah, which which you feel it. Like the fact they finally didn't just update their engine, just did a whole new engine. Man, that's kinda late, which isn't they it? Needed badly. I know they did, but gee whiz, I mean now they're saying there's only a one or two Call of Duties left now. They're doing this. I guess they're going for the big sales, I guess, right? Well, they oh, may yeah. be moving to a a, a live service type deal hmm. i bet like uh apex or Fortnite, where they just add on and add on and add on i didn't think of that that's I mean, a good that's, point that's what that's that. the money grab right now right i could see that with this new engine yeah yeah okay anything yeah, else they so just had um so the alpha is only like a 2v2 mode okay um so everyone has the exact same loadout which is really cool and it's it's just the first like team to kill each other up to like six wins or whatever okay and it 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 was super fun. I I'm really looking forward to to seeing how the game works. Um, on my stream the other night, actually, <laughs> stop this plug. Um, we were watching different trailers and just like frame by frame going through and like picking out things we were noticing and what we were excited for. And man, I'm I've not been hyped for Call of Duty in a long time. I mean, oh. a long time. And this one's uh looking pretty good. Damn it, man! Very nice. I keep Very getting nice. I keep getting sucked into Call of Duty every freaking time. You're not helping out. Crossplay. Let's do this, Gator. <sighs> man, I don't know. I'm tempted. I'm tempted. I'm crossplay. <laughs> I'm tempted. I mean, I am, but I don't know. Easy. What? What are you? What are you even doing, man? <laughs> so, uh, as far as gaming is concerned, as I said earlier, I was on vacation, so right, I yeah. took my Switch with me. Which mm-hmm. goes with me everywhere. I love that thing. Uh, I, Gator, I know you don't have one. What about you, Fud? Uh, do you have a switch? Uh, no, no, just okay. just a knife. Oh, <laughs> good point. <laughs> good point. Did it? Sh- okay. Hey. So, <laughs> hey. Um, so I actually downloaded a new game called Unanaki. Uh, I I didn't download the game. I actually downloaded a demo. Nintendo has a great uh, thing going for it that they will give you like a couple of hours of the game for free and you can play it for you know x progress right mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. if you end up buying the game you keep your progress and it just moves forward and they do that for almost all of their games it's it's excellent um, but unanaki is a actually how about this I'll do a little quiz with you. So the publisher is Square Enix. Okay. And uh, uh-huh. I'm going to I'm gonna let you know the name of the deve- developer, and then you tell me what kind of game you think this is. Okay. okay. The developer's name is Tokyo RPG Factory. <laughs> mm, it's, so it's, it's like Bejeweled then. <laughs> right. Tetris? Am I right? Yes, yes. Awesome. No, it's a, it's a top... It's a top-down RPG slasher, kind of like Diablo. Okay. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, I enjoyed it. I, I think there's there's a lot there um, if you put the time in. I But I just don't know if, if I'll pick it up at retail. I may get it down the road somewhere. Um, and then as far as uh, Destiny goes, I got the Graviton Lance Catalyst. I did exactly Ooh. what you told me to do. Last night, Gator, after we hopped off uh, the pre-pairing uh, for the pod, I went into that adventure and I spent about an hour and 10 minutes in there and got it. I went from 30% to completing it. So I'm excited about that. Excellent. Excellent, man. Glad you got that done. It is a, it is yeah. a, it is a beast of a catalyst to get. Yeah. 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 Um, but other than that, I think, uh, oh, and uh, the fact that I, I tried to finish a Assassin's Creed Unity mission before I hopped on tonight, and I got distracted, and I died, and then the pod started, so I'm going to have to redo that. What, um, uh, what mission are you playing? I am in Memory 10, Sequence uh, sequence 10, Memory 1. Uh, so, classic uh, Sequence 10. So 
I and I explained this to the fellows a couple weeks ago, and I know that you play this because I listened to your last episode. But if they that game, I think it's phenomenal, right? It's, I mean, it's one it of my has its quirks. Ever. Jeez, I you guys, you guys want to get a room? I'll just go stand in a corner over here. Damn okay. Assassin's hey, Creed. Gator. Gator. Hey, 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 what? Hey, hey, tell me more about this game you're playing. <laughs> Assassin's Creed. Uh, anyway, yeah, you're whatever. killing me. Um, Gator, get out. We're busy. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, and to and to actually answer a question y'all answered on just some guardians last week if i could remaster a game i would go into the future and remaster assassin's creed unity <laughs> at 4k 60 frames per second yes of course you that would, would be phenomenal <sighs> yeah, i'm anyone out there's not played that game play it the story is the character of models assassin's the creed. character models are on par with today's character models it's Agreed. phenomenal it's really the first weird. time I booted it up. I was like, why did people, I mean, I know why people hated it. It had a bunch of weird bugs when it launched, you know, you can only see people's teeth and their eyeballs, but <laughs> so, uh, Gator, <laughs> what did you do in destiny this week? I'm sorry. That was terrible. I, uh, yeah, exactly. What did I do in destiny? I played like 10 games this week. What are you talking about, man? I played all kinds of games, not a PVP in destiny. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, everybody knows that's all I play. Uh, I, I do. I have I've played Apex in the past. I played it when it first came out. It was a lot of fun. Hey, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll do. I'm down to do some some Apexing. We we need to have an Apex night. I, I absolutely. Drop too. Absolutely. Man, I had a blast. You know, you don't have to level any yeah, weapons up. You just jump in there and grab a weapon and go. You know. So I like that part. But yes, I did play Destiny. I had two big goals <laughs> I got done this week. Number one, I finally got the wind to go. Hey, hey wow. geez, yes, bro. I uh, I pissed off a lot of people playing strikes last <laughs> night. I would get my what is it? What it was it, that damn grenade launcher? It's in the special slot. Uh, fighting lion, fighting lion. I'd get my fighting Dude. lion kills, and then I'd be, I'm out. I'll go to the next game because that's the problem. <laughs> when they ask you to to get these stupid things in a playlist, give me a break, dude. All you're doing is ruining things for other people. Because all I want to do is get grenade launcher double kills so as soon as everyone's shooting everything and are stealing all your chances to get it what's the use to be there i even tried to do solo uh, nightfall and it nope didn't count so i pissed off probably i don't know a lot of people i had one guy trying to run me over with his sparrow last night it was it was it was pretty <laughs> rage inducing <laughs> can't believe how toxic you are gator i, I am, know the sign I, I you know what i'm just i'm i'm very much like lana i'm a completionist I, I needed to get it done i need to get it done because i have two main goals for the rest of this season scourge of the past raid and crown of sorrows raids and i need to finish my recluse and reckoner uh oof. I'm almost there. I'm really close. I'm really close. I did some comp last week. You know, it's a love hate relationship when you play comp as a solo player. I mean, you don't want to, you don't want to really jump in and get your ass kicked, but once you get in there and you start, well, I mean, once you get in there and you start playing, you're like, okay, this is fun. It's, it's, this is actually less sweaty than, than quick play. I mean, all the sweaty players are in quick play now because they already got all their pinnacle weapons, but you're not wrong. I mean, that's what it feels like, but any, 100%. Anyway, I'm off on a tangent. Uh, the uh, the other goal that I got done is I got my Solstice armor for Warlock, Titan, and Hunter. Just like I, I said. I saw that like, tweet, man. Thanks. Congratulations. Wow. That Congratulations. Was, that was a lot of freaking work, dude. I, I was so glad it was over. And I know everyone's told me, why are you doing that? You know, you're just going to get your first armor drop and, and drop the other stuff right away. Because I have glowy things all over my arms and they're like waving in the breeze. Can your, you. can your armor do that? Just asking. Anyway. Good. Uh, do you my want... hunter doesn't have armor. I think. <laughs> He's naked? I gotta see this. <laughs> I, I feel like it in PvP. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, no wonder everyone's shooting at me. I'm naked. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to mention. Uh, how about you, Hazel? What do you What have you been uh, gaming this week, man? <laughs> awesome, man. Dude, I'm I'm glad I'm, to hear you're making progress on that, man. That's awesome. Good deal. Pretty sure that's illegal, dude. No, no, it's not. No, he's making progress, man. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Good on you, man. Okay. Who who I'll are y'all talking to? Dude, you can't hear Hazel talking right now. He's like, look in disc right now. He's right, right, literally under your name, dude. He's been talking the whole show. He just has been biding his time to wait for me to ask him. To say circle. Something. 
Yeah. <sighs> All right. Whatever. We need to move on. <laughs> okay. Let's move on. Thanks, guys. Gator was toxic, <laughs> I appreciate it, guys. Status report. Exodus Black. Superstructure integrity, 17%. Data store integrity, 38%. Power core integrity, 89%. Failsafe AI core protocol integrity and status report. Okay, it's time to talk about this week at Bungie. It's uh, been a light twab this week. Thank goodness, because I, I don't like reading these things. This is Hazel's job. You know, Hazel's on vacation, so that's just the way it's going to be. I thought Hazel was here, though. No, he's in, he's in the chat. He's talking from his phone. Yeah, he's he's on the beach in Florida right now bastard why didn't you just go to your house and record uh, no it's not that easy i'm not that close to the beach anyway let's go over what uh what's going on at bungie this week it's it's pretty light you know they talked about how the parts one two and three of the director's cut series which i talked about on the last episode and it talked about you know their steps in cross save which went uh live yesterday yes yesterday speaking yes speaking of speaking of cross save did yep. either one of you partake in the cross save yeah, I, I did it. I had a little bit of issues. I guess everyone was trying to do it at the same time. You know, try to link in your accounts. And when I tried to link my Xbox account, it wouldn't link my Gator account. It just linked one of my inactive accounts, which I've never played Bungie, on, never played Destiny on. And I was like, That's you know weird. what? I was like, you know what? F it. I just created it. I, I uh, you know, I can use the game because it's on the same console. I'm on like a family plan deal. So like, screw it. I went ahead and canceled uh, the Xbox Gold and I went ahead and got the Game Pass Extreme or whatever they call it. For fifteen a month. How much was that? Fifteen a month. But see, oh, I'm, a, a I'm paying sixty dollars a year already for just to play online on Xbox, and you get like a hundred games, and some of them are brand new releases. I mean, there are I haven't really <laughs> di- I haven't really dove into it fully yet. I'm just kind of said, you know what? Everyone keeps talking about this, so I just went ahead and pulled the trigger and got it. And I got the first two months for a dollar each, so. I figured I could try it out for a couple months, and if I don't like it, you know, I can go back to gold. So to answer your question, easy. Overall, I mean, just I would try to link something, uh, verify it or authorize it, or whatever it was, for each platform. And as soon as I authorized one, it was like playing whack-a-mole. I'd authorize <laughs> one, and all of a sudden the other account would go, oh, well, you need to authorize this one now. I'm like, right, okay. Right. So I went to that, authorized that one, and all of a sudden the one on the end over here, my Steam account. And they don't need to authorize this one. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? So I finally just turned it off and went and got some dinner and just chilled out and came back later on when everyone wasn't trying to do it. And they probably worked out all the bugs and stuff. But once they got all that done, click, 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 it all worked out. I I tried to unlink the, the Xbox account and it was grayed out. I was like, you know what? Screw it. I need to make a new account anyway. So my new gamer tag for Xbox for for cross save now is Gator G A T R space G D C Gamer Downcast. So that's going to be my new Whoa. gamer tag. And that are look at you, dude. Your mind's blown, isn't it? I know it is. <laughs> okay. How about you guys? Did you guys uh, do any cross saving? So I did. I linked my Xbox account to my PS4 account. Very nice. Uh, hopped on, played a game of Crucible on Xbox. Got my ass kicked, uh, which isn't <laughs> much different from. PS4, so uh, everything is uh, very uh, consistent on that front. And uh, I feel at home. <laughs> I feel at home, right? Um, it felt weird though. Uh, it just being playing Destiny on the Xbox. So Elmer, I played all of D1 on an Xbox, and then I switched to PS4 for D2. So it was just kind of weird booting up the Xbox, but everything linked first time. But I have an SSD for my PS4 Pro. Uh-huh. And I do not have an SSD for my Xbox, and Ooh. the loading times yes. are horrendous. So they're bad when you don't have an SSD, but once you go to an SSD and go back, I mean, you oh, feel like insane. you're just sitting there in a vacuum, just mm-hmm. like, when am I going to no, get out? just um, going from like PC onto the PS4. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's oh, like, yeah. oh, okay. oh, it's it's so fast on PC. Like you can. Mid so. mid fight in a PvP match, switch stuff around, and so you're just like, oh god, what's happening right now? It's really nice. So I'm 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 ready. I think I'm going to do IB next week, next Tuesday on Xbox. I got a buddy I hadn't played with in a long time, and uh, I'm excited about hopping on that platform and uh, playing with him and maybe some other Xbox guys. So. Well, what That's I'm doing, awesome. what I'm doing this week, I'm actually going to play in the PvP league with uh, Fluffy and Admiral Nips and Dex and all those guys from Death RX. I can't wait; it's going to be fun. I missed that tonight. Like a blast. They had it going tonight yeah. on Xbox, but I'm recording, so Fluffy's got a uh, PC night scheduled for this Saturday night at I think at ten o'clock, and I was like, I'm in. 
uh, I I'll, I get my ass kicked. I don't care. I just oh shit. When you play, I might have to be there. When you play against better players, it makes you a better player. So I I want to play against better players. I want to have to be able to adapt to how they're playing against me. So I'm looking forward to that part. Uh, but it's it's awesome, man. Isn't it awesome? You can start looking up people they haven't gamed with in a while because now you can play across platforms. Oh no! I've actually for the first time ever looked up how much just like a regular Xbox One costs for mm-hmm. the first time ever because I'm like, well, why not? Like, yeah. I mean, I can't afford to, but it's the first time I looked into it. Yeah, I think they nailed it out of the park, man. I, I think that that is. I think it's awesome that they that they brought that on board. Well, to 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 your point, easy about the SSD. I have one of my pro also, and going from PS4 to PC today, obviously field of view, and I'm getting. Uh, I turned the I turned VSync off, so I'm getting up to 200 frames a second now. Uh, it's pretty nice. Go on. Oh, no. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah. uh, you like frame. You, you like frames too. Slower. I, I like frames. <laughs> now, actually, more frames is faster. Yes, it's it's just crisper, you know. And I'm I'm I think I'm going. Uh, I took VSync off VSync 60, and now my card, as long as I don't have anything else on my other monitor, it'll run anywhere from 80 to. 200 i've even seen it spike to 300 during load screens but during the actual action of the game i'm pulling probably around an average about 80 frames a second so that's legit dude and I'm, that's at 1440p so it's not it's not at it's over 1080 but it's not at 4k 4k yeah. i think that's the i can probably make it work but then i'll just start getting some some screen tear and uh, you'll see it'll start falling apart I'm good with 1440. I can see everything clearly, and there's more detail. Easy when you when you play on on PC, everything has more detail to it. It's like oh, it's like you're looking through a magnifying glass. I, Don't yeah, you agree? Bet, so what I was gonna say was uh, I I never played PC, so the field of view, the only itty bitty field of view I can relate to is the Division Two added mm-hmm. a oh, yeah. field of view for their consoles, and it felt like a whole new game. Dude, mm-hmm. I mean, it was amazing. So I can only imagine Destiny oh, with the Hive on PC. Oh. So much creepier, scary as hell. You can actually see the oh, stuff oozing God. off their face. It's it's so nice. <laughs> Sniping them, <laughs> you, you miss shots. You're just like, oh Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, oh shit. Reload, reload. <laughs> uh, Fud, did you cross save, or are you still on PC, or what are you doing? I, I need to set it up because I I'm because again I started on PS4. Right. Um I just haven't gotten around to it. I'm okay. I'm playing. So I'm um I'm an ADD gamer. I'm usually playing like nine games at the same time. Oh wow. Okay. Well, I mean within the same time frame, not at the exact same moment. <laughs> sure. Be ridiculous. Sure, I got you. I wish I could. Well good. <sighs> Let's see, they talked about the three videos with the, the reveals at GamesCon and uh, I'll refer to to easy a little bit later on that. You know, they talked about the you having to migrate to Steam. So there's a little little tutorial tells you what to do with that. You click on a certain area on the um, on the Bungie main page, and it'll tell you step by step what to do. It's really easy. I was really surprised. Uh, it was very easy mm-hmm. to do. You just log in and on Steam and follow the prompts. And I think it took me five minutes to do it. It, it went long at all. Did you do this, Fud? No. I, again, I okay. I haven't really done anything Destiny this week. I got you because um, of you. the solos, really. But yep. Um, so you'll be doing but it no, then. like I I did watch this video because I thought it would be a bigger thing than it was because I've never I've never experienced something like this yep. gaming on PC, you know. Mm-hmm. And yeah, watching that video, I was like, that's it. Oh my god! I even made the joke I think last week on the show that like it was going to be a train wreck, and this is so simple. It's like yeah. people in big corporations know what they're doing. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> yeah, right. You throw enough money at it, and it'll work itself out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they mentioned uh, one important point I wanted to make to our listeners is that uh, you need to grab your silver and uh, your your favorite stuff from Eververse. You need to, I think the cutoff was September third for that. Uh, so, yes. So you don't want to miss out on that. If you there's something there's a sparrow like that sparrow I do not have on the page they're showing. I need to get that one. I do have the Wonder Twins Unite. That is so awesome. I love it. Yeah, that. I don't have that one. Yet. Oh, it's so Oof. fun. It's so fun to do. And the other person doesn't have to have it. So you can just say, hey, come on over here. And and it'll. I, I've done it to random so many times. It's so fun to do. Uh, let's see. Iron Banner's coming back as of the next reset, which will be the 27th. 
10 a.m. Pacific, and it will end on September 3rd. Uh, they did put up a new calendar. Let's see, just skimming through it really quick. There's going to be one more Iron Banner on the 17th of September through the 24th. Uh, they're gonna, That's awesome. They're going to have the big patch they've been talking about, 2.5.2.2, coming on the 3rd, which is going to be the reset after Iron Banner, the first one coming up. Uh, on the 10th of September through the 17th, that reset, they're going to have Moments of Triumph Week and an Infamy Boost. And then the, finally, before the season ends, they're going to have one more Infamy Boost and Anne of Mayhem and Valor Boost on in the Crucible. So uh, look out for those. And the big thing I wanted to talk about is they got a September Community Challenge, and the destination is Mars. And what they're doing here is they're, it's... I don't know if you guys played like uh, Battlefield uh, and where you they'd have a community challenge where they you they were trying to get so many kills in a game. And if you re- met that threshold, it would unlock a, an unlock for everybody. That's kind of what they're doing here. Uh, here's the objectives. You got to defeat 175,000 Wave 7 Escalation Protocol bosses. Uh, you need to that'll def- be done day one of uh, probably probably <laughs> i'll be there i'll this be there because it's ridiculous I, i'm two weapons away on ep from my wayfarer title so of course i'll be there because be, that'll be the time to do it oh, because yeah. everyone's going to be there doing it we'll see secondly defeat 300 million hive on mars i'm thinking that'll be day one too yep. uh, that's 300 you know for a million players that's 300 hive each no big deal uh, Easy. mars nightfalls we need to defeat knockers 150,000 times that Done. that's that nightfall and the other nightfall is Zol. Defeat him a hundred thousand times. Even and, easier to do. And here's the one that might be tricky. Use three hundred thousand override frequencies. Do you guys remember what these things are? You go, I little... don't think I remember what this is. Oh, is that to get the the javelin thing? Yeah, you go to those little triangle spinning boxes and you enter in a yeah. you, you get a you get well, you have to turn the frequencies in into like a key and then the key will give you a hint on where it is on the map and then you go there oh, and oh, I, I, I may be totally wrong but that's what i'm guessing it is and if that all happens three things are going to happen you're going to get a cool emblem yes. which they show on the page it's pretty 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 wild it's pretty nice uh yeah, the, I like it. the second thing is emperor callus will be impressed and he will give one additional uh menagerie chest reward when you right. hit, when you put your runes right. in to get your thing so they're going to give you two instead of one now and then get people into menagerie again <laughs> exactly exactly at least you know at least it's satisfying a few of the people who are really upset about it um i think they should have just put three chests in and have everyone just re-enter their runes and just keep getting whatever they want I totally agree uh but you know i'll take the two no big deal and every friday this is of course if these conditions above are met every friday there'll be an additional one so you'll get three oh, cool. on fridays you'll get three so maybe it'll be like i i saw so okay last can we um go ahead can we take a moment real quick um it's it's kind of really important um okay the first line in the september challenge mars yes did you want to read that or did you want me to do it you do it go ahead you do it you read it okay okay very important moment whether we wanted it or not we've stepped into a war with a hive on mars thank you thank you <laughs> thank you thank you for me that moment <laughs> Excellent. It was uh, very nice. Was there, very nice. Very important, and I felt like you know <laughs> the the community needed that. You do it spot on, spot on, folks. Yeah, that's great. That's very great, nice, dude. Very cool. Uh, the only thing left was okay. They're they're saying that uh, this is their destiny player support. They're saying that you know once you link in everything and you do the cross save, it cannot be disabled. If you do disable it, it can't be re-enabled for 90 days. That's why I just said hell with it and just oh, just made a new Xbox account. Uh, yeah. So so you have to wait 90 days now. If uh, once once because... you enable cross save and you disable it or dislink something or cancel it, you have to wait 90 days to activate it again. So whatever you do, don't do that because you won't be able to play across all platforms until you reconnect it 90 days later. And 90 days, if I'm thinking about that, that's well into Shadowkeep. So don't do that. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's probably at the end of Shadow Keep. Yeah, some yes. would say that's like three months. <laughs> I thought this was funny. They said uh, on September third, you can buy silver from Steam, even though you can't play the game. <laughs> I thought that was so <laughs> stupid. Come well, on, man. I mean, honestly, that's some people's thing. Really? Know? Be prepped for when uh, all the new stuff hits. Okay, oh, yeah. well, okay, maybe there. I'm wrong. That's. I mean, that's why we have the you know the zero hour mission is because we had the. Wow. Uh, as the people, um, even the technical term for them is whales out there who just go nuts on it. Uh, okay, maybe you're right. 
Maybe I'm maybe I'm not yeah. seeing that point. Uh, I understand. Uh, anything else I I forgot uh, here, Hazel? <laughs> No, I talked about that. Yeah, yeah, in depth. It's, you yeah. should probably listen next time. That's really rude to do yeah. on the podcast. Come on, Hazel. <laughs> Come on, man. You got to pay attention. I mean, I know you're not here, but you got to at least, you know, pretend to listen, okay? Uh, I'm, yeah. I think I'm doing your job well tonight, so I don't want to hear any complaints. So, uh, okay, that's... I think you two are huh? bat s crazy. What? I have no idea who y'all are talking to. What are you, what are you talking about? Do it. You need I, to write this. Down. I don't understand. I don't know what that. I, I don't know. What, maybe I need to. I I don't know, but I I have no idea who y'all are talking to. I don't know what to say, Fud. I don't know what to do to 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 explain what's going on here. I, I I think he fell off a mountain, dude. I think he was hiking and he he tripped and fell down a few times. What do you think? Yeah. Ser- I just, you know, <laughs> hiking well, I, on I didn't fall. Is, uh, I, I didn't experience. fall, but my suitcase took a. <laughs> What are you talking about? I've, I have no idea. <laughs> Your suitcase. Rip the suitcase. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that poor thing. Mm. All right, let's move on. Okay, now we're going to talk to Easy and see what's been going on in Germany. Some crazy thing called Gamescon? What's up with that? Right. So Gamescon was this past week and I took a couple notes here and I'd like to at least present them and hopefully we've got some discussion points. We'll see. Uh, so as you know, Gamescon is a similar event, kind of like uh, what they have out in, in LA every year. Oh, E3? And so, Yeah, E3. I just went blank. Oh my goodness. Anyway, so it's just a big convention and all the developers and, and publishers show up and, and they do game demos and they do trailer releases. So I took a couple notes and uh, first off, I kind of want to pour some liquor out for my homies at Game Informer. I don't know if y'all know oh, this, but yes. oh, GameStop geez. laid off a bunch of people from Game Informer while they were in Germany. What? Seven people. Yeah, seven people were laid off and and the game informer podcast is actually one of my favorite podcasts like i i think they do a phenomenal job i mean it's it it is to the this point is, it's uh, funny it's ben hansen and crew an, an important factor that though that a lot of people don't realize um when they came out and said game informer got rid of seven people something you need to realize is the entire staff of game informers like 14 people oh it's yeah it's, so that's half the staff of Game Informer is gone. Yeah, that magazine yeah. And, carried and they claim them. That they're they're still going to do the magazine and they're still going to do the online subscription. And I'm actually one of the people I get the Game Informer magazine every week. Every, I, I uh, do too. Month. Like I still, mm-hmm. I, I love the artwork. I, I love yeah. the articles. I think it's great writing. And uh, man, it just really hit home. Like I said, I listen to the podcast every week. Um, I get the magazine. I, I think I think it's a bummer. Uh, GameStop clearly is it has hit a wall with how they have decided to move forward with their business plan, and it's just not working right. Digital sales yeah. are really kicking it, killing it, and and it needs to find its way. And I really hope Game Informer doesn't suffer because of that uh, yeah. in the long you know, term. It's rough to see, you know, you know, with GameStop, it's like you wish they hadn't shit on all their customers before they became irrelevant. <laughs> Cyberpunk is going to be released on Stadia. I don't know if either one of y'all are interested in Stadia. I I think that I'm going to let the guinea pigs run the show there, and then if it's something excellent, I mean, it's pretty cheap. It's like a hundred bucks to get in, mm-hmm. and uh, I I would think about that. Um, I just saw Racer get this Spider- get the get the Founders Edition on this, and I, yeah, I, yeah, I think I'm going to let him yeah, right- let him be our critic. Yeah, Racer's going to get in on the ground floor. He's really excited for it. And it sounds great, right? Especially for someone like me who travels. Sure. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, that sounds really good, even though my Switch is my baby. I I, I don't know if I could ever replace that. But anyway, a uh, brief discussion here. Spider-Man. Uh, so Disney and Sony oh boy. did not come to terms over Spider-Man. So Spider-Man will be leaving the MCU mm. universe. Um I don't know if y'all heard that or not. Speaking and Sony of, speaking of has one hundred percent taken the rights of Spider Man, and purchased, uh, full on purchased Insomniac Games, who developed the Spider Man PS4 game. For me personally, I know this is probably against the grain. I kind of like this move. 
Uh, I think Insomniac nailed it, and I am way more invested into the Spider-Man game itself than Spider-Man being in the MCU universe. I mean, I, whatever. He'll still have his movies. I'll still get great games. But I know some people are really disappointed about that news. Disney already is trying to take over the world as it is. Yeah. Disney, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's so. it's such a weird place to be. Like, you know, the current Spider-Man we have has been really good in the MCU. It just had its own couple movies. And, like, oh, it just... Uh, it's a it's a weird thing until I have more inform- information. I don't know which way to go with it. It just feels... Right really it's i don't know it's just a weird place to be right now i i am excited uh, again um i'm i'm gonna be a ps5 guy on day one i mean 4k 60 frames per second i know is already being done on the pc side but just imagining i played all the way through spider-man ps4 it was an incredible game Gorgeous. and it was like it it was like uh 1700 1800 P at 30 frames per second without an SSD loading it. So I could only imagine upgrading all three of those into a game like that. It's going to be incredible. Um, the Avengers game had a couple of, uh, playthroughs, so some gameplay demos. I'm not really interested. It looks like it's on rails, lots of quick time events. I think I'm going to have to see more from that studio, uh, before I'm sold on that Avengers game. Uh, Death Stranding, uh, is it looks incredible. I like. I struggle that I'm going to buy Death Stranding on day one. Uh, I, I may give it a week to kind of process to see what people say. Either one of you have any interest? I mean, Gator, I know that it's going to be right in the middle of Shadow Keep, so even if you play it, it'll be down the road. What about you, Elmer? I mean, are you any interest in, I, in Death Stranding? You know, like... It's it's interesting, but not enough that I think I want to play it. Um, I'm I'm gonna I'll watch I'll probably watch a full playthrough, but I don't think I personally will play it. Like you know, the idea is interesting. Um, the gameplay trailer, like I don't know, it really didn't show a lot of like how pretty the game looks, but yeah. Well, it's on um, the uh, it's on the Horizon Zero Dawn engine. It's on the that the engine that that made Horizon Zero Dawn. So it's gonna be a good looking engine. Oh, absolutely. So. It's just hard to dive roll when you have a baby on your back. So. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm going to go into detail on a later show. Uh, I don't want to go into it here. I need to do a little bit more research, but I kind of have a grasp on what, what it's about, um, and I'd like to talk through that. But uh, the first mission for uh, Borderlands 3 has been released on YouTube. I don't know if either one of y'all have any interest, but oh, I'm, yeah. I'm diving yes. into that. I'm going to be there. There's a three-hour YouTube um, playthrough as well as the first mission that's up on YouTube, um, and it just looks incredible. There's it only like there's stuff. only one game that's going to get me from Destiny. I'll be prime. My I'll be they'll be pulling me off of it. My hands will be grabbing onto Destiny, and it's that's the only game that's going to do it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's. Ugh. I'm not going to watch that video because I don't want nope. to see mm-hmm. no any of that, but. I got to play a demo and it's, oh God, did it feel good. You got to play a demo of it? Yeah. How does it feel? It's just it a feels... Smooth, it? So, you know, Borderlands 2, phenomenal game, incredible story, hilarious. The shooting was okay. Mm-hmm. I really didn't like the shooting aspect of it. I agree. Um, but Borderlands 3 nailed it. Wow. Yeah. The shooting, it feels so good. And I, the... I played it on a on an Xbox controller, which I've never ever used, and it like it just felt natural. It oh, would you it say it's amazing? It plays good. It's so smooth. The shooting is spot on. Would you say it's as good as Destiny as far as weapon handling? I think it just it probably felt better than it is just because I had Borderlands two in my mind when I played it. Okay, and it was just so it's it's a million times better than that shooting. But until it's out, I can't really say one way or the other. But it, I mean, it felt good. You didn't have bullets that were just. You know, it wasn't Fortnite bullets that just go everywhere, you know. I got you. Felt good. So, two more quick quick uh, bullet points and we'll move on. Okay. Uh, the Witcher 3 is coming out on Switch. Uh, I am oh, somewhat shit, I excited that. for this. I, I'm going to wait for it to be released out in the wild, but I may grab that. Uh, and then, I don't know if either one of you have heard of this uh, game called Greedfall. Um, it's by a uh, studio called Spiders. 
and okay. it is like a third part. It's a, a third party, but it's a third person adventure game. Uh, somewhat okay. like it looks kind of like Sekiro, uh, and except you are colonizing the new world kind of like back in the day, except mm-hmm. there's monsters and potions and it looks incredible. It looks so good. What's it, what's that called again? I don't know if I've heard this one. I'm interested. It, it's called Greedfall. Greedfall. Okay. Yeah. Check it out, man. It looks, it looks really, really good. Um, here's a really quick um, synopsis. It's a, uh, upcoming action role-playing game developed by Spiders and published by Focus Home Interactive. The game is set in a 17th century styled fantasy setting. Um, and I, it's an island paradise has been discovered by colonial forces. And uh, it's got magic and monsters. So it's kind of a mix between a colonial setting and uh, fantasy. Uh, and it Ooh, looks good. like it looks like so much fun. But anyway, that's I mean that's all for now. There's another game I want to talk about, but I I, I think I'm going to save it for the next uh, the uh, next one. So I think um, if anyone wants something to reference, it looks like Dragon Age, but like set in the colonial times. Right. So I thought if you watch the gameplay, the movement is kind of like Sekiro. It's very okay. side to side, and um, oh, but wow. it, it, clearly it's not Sekiro. But yeah. um, but it looks incredible. This looks awesome. Yeah. Thank you for thank you for putting this. I'm like really in. Okay, sorry. I got to close this, or I'm going to just sit here and deep dive into this game. Okay. I, okay. I I hope cool. that game you're not talking about is the one I'm thinking of, and I'll talk to you about off off air. But uh, okay, I, I think I know the but game I you're talking about. From a Gamescon uh, aspect, I think that's it for me. Okay, that's awesome. Well, Sweet. thanks, thanks, Easy. I appreciate it, man. Only one minute left. Okay, so this segment is called the Speed Run, where we have a database of 66 randomly asked questions, and FUD, you'll have 60 seconds to answer as many as you can. Remember, these are short one or two word answers, and we're going to keep track of how many questions were answered by our featured guests in each episode. The questions are randomly asked, so no one can memorize the order, and you'll need to answer as quickly as you can. As soon as something comes to mind on the answer, answer it. At the end of the year... The guest with the most questions answered will win a cool prize. And let's just say it's a tie. If it is a tie, I will put everyone it is tied into a hat and we'll randomly draw your name and you'll be the winner. So you'll be at least... I thought you meant the prize is a tie. I was like, (laughs) no, 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 no no ties. Tonight, I'm going to ask the questions randomly from our list. And easy, you're on double duty tonight, brother. You're going to have to keep time and keep score. Double D, I got it. All right, we ready? (sighs) You ready, FUD? Ready, 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 ready. <sighs> All right, three, two, one. What's your favorite Destiny planet? Ooh, Mercury. Have you ever been in a band? Yes. What's the latest you've been up gaming? Uh, ooh, 24 hours. Wow. Smooth or chunky peanut butter? Smooth. Have you ever been camping? You broke off. Damn it, No. If you had the ability to control animals or electronics with your mind, which one would it be? Electronics. Would you rather be famous or unknown? Mm, famous. Would you rather be have fast texting or fast reading? Fast reading. Human, awoken, or exo? Awoken. Fusion rifle, shotgun, or sidearm? Shotgun. Grenades or melees? You cut out again. Grenades or melees? Melees. Rock, paper, or scissors? Ooh, paper. What is the last musical artist you listened to? Time. Damn it. Time. Man, Time. two of those you cut no, out. No, no, no. Hold on. So, so we, we do give an extra answer if you do cut out. And you mentioned cut I, out. So, so I gave him two extra points because you cut out once. Yes. And then it, I felt like you repeated the question again yes yes maybe that's I don't fair know if it was just cutting well this slowly. this happened twice this happened to grugrux so, i mean his poor internet so he him. he is at a let me count them up uh one two ten fifteen what thousand yes! thirteen he's at a third oh you tied nips you tied nips no Give uh, me one because you got out twice. <laughs> we did. I, you, you I gave, gave you two. You only answered eleven. <laughs> it seems like no. you answered so many more. Oh man! If I don't win because you read those questions, girl, <laughs> I'm flying to Florida. 
and, uh, and buying him a beer. Yes. And I'm going to buy you a beer and then dump it in your face <laughs> and then throw a tab at you afterwards. Okay. Fair enough, man. Fair enough. All right, Fudd. Thanks for giving <laughs> that a go, man. I'm... <laughs> Great job, Fud. Though. Great That's, job, man, I mean, you dude. Were, you were here to win you it. Were ready. You were here to win here, it, dude. Well, okay, let's just oh, say let's say you're tied yeah, with you're tied with so Nips. Close. You're you're in the you're basically on the leaderboard. So let's just say I it goes. Wanted to beat him. I know, but say it goes thirteen to the end of the year. <laughs> You'll get in a drawing at least. Okay, it's, it's not that big a deal. It is a big deal. <laughs> I know, I know. It's the gamer and all. Wanted of us. to crush him. It's the gamer and all of us, dude. I understand. I get it. So good job, man. Good job. All right, let's move on to the next segment of the show overtime let's do this all right uh it's time for the twitter and discord questions yeah i said it yeah where this is gonna be awesome oh, yeah <laughs> absolutely fud's on my level <laughs> yeah we got 40 40 plus questions 40 this something what I was questions talking about when you're on my show <laughs> oh my literally God. you guys it's insane it's how a, many questions hey i am so pumped that everyone gives a crap about us to ask us questions yeah you know? yeah man this is this is my favorite section for sure 40 oh. questions and 38 of them are from scum death. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. Oh my God. No, we had some good questions tonight. Uh, and yeah. easy. You're going to crank it up, man. Let's go. All righty. So question one and two go together. It's a two part question. One question. Number one is from uncle scum death. Question number two is from AKA gear dad. I'll read them back to back. I... What is the most embarrassing fart you have ever done? Uh, follow up. What was the reaction to said embarrassing fart? So when easy me in middle school, I was at an amusement park, got on a roller coaster and uh, everybody got on. I was the only one in the, in the, in the, what in the cart or whatever. Mm -hmm. They put the bar down. We're about to take off and I just let one fly. I'm like, ain't nobody going to smell it. I don't have to worry about anything. So there was a very, very pretty girl <laughs> that was a single, and they're like, wait, wait, one more. Oh, and my God. I know where this is going. <laughs> oh, my she God. She sat right next to it, and oh. they put the bar down, and both of us sat there in one of the most disgusting farts I have ever <laughs> laid to this earth. Then you... she looked at me. <laughs> She didn't say anything, but she looked at me like it was pure terror was on this girl's face. <laughs> That's so <funny. laughs> Oh, my God. She was like, are you contagious? I mean, how, how old were you in this when this happened? It's like in uh, high school? Middle school. Okay. I think I was like 13, Wow. 14. Oh, my God. <laughs> Fudd, what do you think? You got an answer to this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, my old job. I worked security and I had my facility supervisor uh, was taking a tour uh, with our district manager and I was leading said tour because it was during my shift. We got into an elevator and um, unknown to me, I had gas. Um, it slipped out loudly and um, was a little wetter than I had hoped. <laughs> <laughs> like in a long came Polly. <laughs> um, so basically um, at my old job, in front of my station manager or my whatever and my district manager i shit myself in an elevator wow <laughs> you have to take uncle scum uh brazen advice never trust a fart well see if i'd known one was coming i wouldn't have trusted it it kind of <laughs> just happened oh man oh that's funny that's, that's the worst funny. you got me beat <laughs> uh i don't know if i can't top that i mean when i was young i was so high strung and uh, my stomach was always in knots about something. And I was at a, uh, a family get together and kind of following the same story as you, but I shouldn't have trusted it. And uh, I let it go and I went, oh, something's terribly wrong here. And uh, my <laughs> wife was my wife was behind me and she knew exactly what happened. I just kind of <laughs> kind of clinched up a little bit, you know, you know, that that, 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 that move. Yeah. That kind of uh, that subtle move, like ooh, like, little brrr, like ooh, yeah. uh, ooh, <laughs> and uh, all she did was just roll her eyes and walk by. <laughs> it's like, yep, yeah. yeah, you married this. That's on you. <laughs> this is all yours, baby. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Scum Death has the next couple. Okay. 
So I think I can uh, go ahead and add these two. So Uncle Scum asks, uh, I'm an 18th birthday barbecue. Is the word Alexa the most used word in the English speaking countries? Love the show. Alexa. I don't know what the most you probably like. If you watch any reality TV or any TV, everybody says like. I think L I K E is the most used word in, in English. What about y'all? That sounds about right to me. Now, FUD is doing probably some Wicca research right now. <laughs> probably. Mm. It uh, it appears to be the word of and and. Oh, that's boring. Oh, we say that a ton on this show. That's I get yeah. It. yeah. The the second part to that is how did you celebrate your 18th birthday or is this just an English thing? I think Americans celebrate the 21st birthday. I don't know. I, oh, yeah, because their drinking age is different. Yeah. Right. Right. My 21st birthday, I think I passed out by about 10 o'clock in the morning. I was so drunk and I don't remember, remember most of the rest of the day. What about y'all? I don't remember a damn thing. Period. God, that was so long ago, man. I, I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. I, I was about to ask. Do you, I can't remember. remember? What, what, did they have cars? Did they have cars back then? I can't remember. <laughs> I'm, I'm just... I'm just going to politely that move. That game you were talking about <laughs> yes. took place in colonial times. I yes, um, the tweeter. <laughs> the, 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 the Twitter. The Twitter. Yes. Uh, send forth the, the message bird. I'm going to send a tweeter. <laughs> the blue one. The blue so, one. Uh, scum death again. Uh, what do you regret selling? And I assume this is if we've sold anything in our life, mm. what is the one thing you regret selling? Yeah, I, it's, it immediately popped in my head. This place opened up nearby us years ago that like um, sold like books and magazines and video game stuff, like this huge warehouse. And they, it was like GameStop where if, like you did any sort of credit, you got more for your stuff and whatnot. Um, but so I thought it was easy money because I was younger. And so when I was really little, my mom had bought me the entire collection of the Hardy Boys series. I don't know if you guys know that. Yeah, I read the them. Hardy Boys. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Sure. incredible that's i i learned how to read on those mm -hmm. um and um well like read by myself like I, it's not like i i didn't go you know go dot go i immediately went to um mm -hmm. eric killed him so i took the entire collection down there because i needed money that i didn't need as bad and and sold that in and i've not been able to get it back and that is my biggest regret is mm -hmm. not having that collection at the time it didn't yeah. You know, when you're a teenager and it, uh, yeah, it doesn't, you're like, oh, this isn't that important. And then after it's mm -hmm. gone, like a couple years later, you're like, oh man, that was so sentimental and meant so much. What am I? I'm an idiot. I don't think I've ever sold anything that I regret. But when I went off to college, my parents sold an electric guitar that oh. I had that was a little bit older. It wasn't great, but I had plans for it. I was going to put some new pickups in it. I was going to uh, put a new board on it. I was going to uh, change it up as much as I could. It was going to be like my experiment. Mm -hmm. And it got home after like the first six weeks of college. Gone. I think they gave it away. Man, whatever. Anyway, uh, what about you, well, uh, Gator? Well, this was one of the questions I was looking forward to. I think we, and, me and Scum Death had this conversation. We were talking about motorcycles. Oh, I'm sorry motorbikes what they call in england uh moto i had a 2006 black on black hayabusa oh my god this this bike fit me like a glove it would turn corners so well I was a, i'm a bigger guy so you put me on like a jixer which i've had one of those before too I, it looks like a gorilla on a on a little bicycle i mean the bikes are just small <laughs> but this hayabusa <laughs> this, the this i'm telling you this hayabusa it was such a nice long sport bike it fit Go me on. so well yeah, exactly and uh i remember trading it in for i think a buell one of the rotax buells and i kicked myself i mean hours after i left i was already pissed so that was oh, that's my, no that's my answer those habusas what how many what cc was it like 1200 1300 it went 145 mm -hmm. miles an hour in about mm, well i did test it kind of uh i think it took about yeah. i got on i4 and and in the traffic was light and i said you know what I bought this damn thing. Let's see what I can do. So I tucked my little helmet down in the little the little hurricane, you know, the little area where if you lift your head up, you're pretty much flown off the bike. I think I went to zero to 145 in about nine seconds. It was so damn fast. 
And that's part of the reason yeah. I part of the reason I got rid of it because I, I knew I was probably not going to live on that bike very long. Smart, smart decision. So next question from Jaron four twenty, and then Skull Reaper actually has a follow up <laughs> question that's pretty funny. What is your favorite PvP weapon and your favorite pie weapon? I think we know what he meant uh, there. <laughs> all right, uh, uh, I'll let you go ahead and answer this first. Let me think about it. Uh, I use the dad furnace. <laughs> That's everybody refers it to the blast furnace from the, I got so good. I got really good rolls right off the bat. And I, I like it because I have one, that ha- I have like 10 of these guns and I use them in different ranges and situations I'm in. And I would say that's probably my favorite weapon on PVE as well. The blast furnace. Check it out. Check, check it out. So, uh, I, I'm going to go with a gun, uh, that I reviewed two weeks ago. I think the Kabu AR three is my favorite PVP gun. It's just the all around utilitarianism of it. I, I really love. And then surprisingly enough, my favorite PVE gun is the thorn. So fudge. You, I, you don't know this, I'm sure, but uh, I took a long break from destiny almost a year. And uh, when I found out the Thorn came back in D2, I think that's what sucked me back in, is finding out that that gun was coming out. And uh, I came back, and that's the first thing I went after it. And, man, I, I love that gun. I love that gun. Oh, yeah. No, it's, I, I actually had taken a break, too, right before that. And um, I didn't hear about Thorn coming back, and I was in a Crucible match and got killed by it. And I was like, immediately just went, like, teleported in time, and I went, what just happened? Uh, okay, De- not this <laughs> destiny one rage all back again <laughs> yep oh geez um well as for me i would say my favorite uh pvp weapon would be Paraben Green! <laughs> <laughs> very nice <laughs> awesome a plus buddy <laughs> And uh, my favorite PvE weapon would be Harrigan Green. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. You got me by surprise, man. I wasn't expecting that. Oh man, <laughs> I love it's you for that. Trend. That was hilarious. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, all right, it's getting hot in here. Is it getting hot? Yeah, in here? It is. What's the next question. Yeah, tell me. Oh, uh oh. I think Skull oh. was asking, well, since he misspelled pie or PV, PVE, I think he was asking, well, then what's your favorite pie? Uh, I'm pretty simple about my pie. I just like it. Uh, pepperoni, olives, black olives, <laughs> cheese. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. Oh, it's apple for me, guys. Pretty plain and simple. Oof. Banana cream mm. every day. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Drafty asks, who's the greatest James Bond actor in in each of your opinions? Now, this is, hits close to home because I love me some James Bond. Yes. However, I think each actor had their highs and lows. So I almost ranked them via movies instead of actors. Um, I think Thunderball may be my favorite. It's a Sean Connery. Yep. And uh, I think Goldeneye is pretty close i thought goldeneye was exceptional mm-hmm. as well um and that's i thought pierce brosnan and goldeneye was great but in the rest of the stuff he wasn't that great mm-hmm. um but sean connery was uh I, I guess i would have to give sean connery even though Gosh. i loved roger moore yeah and, roger moore was good he, yeah. but he was different he was funny he wasn't mm-hmm. like flashy he was funny uh, he was just doing? walking one-liners. That's really all Roger Moore was. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, keep in mind, how long, how many decades has 007 spanned? I mean, Roger Moore was the greatest James Bond for the 70s, right? I mean, he was all about being groovy, had the big collar shirts, and, and yeah, he had the one-liners, but, dude, that guy was slick. Well, if so I'm, I'm going to go off just base what the question asked, which is who was the best actor, I think... If you get into just acting prowess, Daniel Craig has been the best. Just like how deep he's made, the, he took the character, you know. But I mean, God, I mean, if you, the way you took it easy, like, yeah, that's. I mean, they all had their own thing, you know. Timothy Dalton was just like I thought awesome. his were pretty good too. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was. I wish he had done more of them, you know. And then I really J- James enjoyed Lazenby. Pierce Brosnan. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, James Lazenby on that On Your Majesty's Secret Service. Yep. I, 
he only did one, but I thought it was excellent. I one of my favorites, yeah. And then I, I mean, obviously Sean Connery, but just acting by itself, I'd say Daniel Craig. I got I can't answer this with one person. I have to say old and new. So old's going to be Sean Connery because I mean he really is original to me. I know there was one before. He's a classic. Yes, yes. And nice. uh, I got to go Daniel Craig because I mean. Dude, the guy's really good. I mean, he's got another. He's got so a movie. Good. He's got a movie coming out. that has nothing to do with with 007, and I can't wait to see it. So I think he's broken the mold and gotten into other movies. Like a lot of the other actors had a hard time doing that. Uh, Skull ask: Who would make your answer? Uh, who would make your answer a question faster if someone said "gun to your head" or if they said "gun to your nuts"? Aren't neither. Those the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, neither, please. I'll take C. What is C? None of the above. That's what I answer. Right. Right. I don't know, uh, guys. There's just something about like like a gun barrel right against your nuts. It just does it for me. You know? Yeah. Okay. Whatever, <laughs> man. Uh, Chubby Wizard asked, do you put water on your toothbrush before you put toothpaste on it and toilet paper over the top or under the roll? Uh, water first, toilet paper over the top. No, I think I do water second. Uh, you don't get the bristles all wet first? No. No. I, I, I don't know. I'm weird, I guess. And Yeah, toilet paper over. Yeah, I, I've always done... I've always wet my brush first and then put toothpaste on it because you, you want it to kind of simmer, you know? Let the toothpaste kind of work its way into the brush. And then uh, I've been trained well. I've been married a long time. So my wife informed me that the, that the roll goes over. And I've been told three times. The fourth time, I had it down. What if, like, 99% of the time, it's sideways sitting on the counter? <laughs> then I put it on the roll that I left empty that I knew I should have put the new roll on and put it over. Yeah, I, it's, I feel like I'm in charge of putting the toilet paper on the roll. Like, if anybody else runs out of toilet paper, they just leave it on the back of the toilet seat. I'm like, just put it on the damn roll. I mean, you're right there. You're mm -hmm. already in action. Do it. Okay, scum ask. Rats or mice or dogs or cats? And he did rats or mice because I feel like we've answered dogs or cats, but I'm both on dogs and cats. I am neither on rats or mice. Mice. Those things are awesome. Well, what about dogs or cats? What was your answer there? Oh, oh okay. Um, well, I've only ever had cats, but I've always wanted a dog. Okay. So I'm going to have to answer cats, but I would love, wife can hear me right now. I would love to have a dog. <laughs> okay i'll help you out bud i'll try to help you out on that i have two dogs Thanks. now i used to have a cat lived 20 years he was my best bud so I'm, I'm both but uh i'm right now i'm a dog person uh so this next one is a vi it's a visual question no no it so no no i'm sorry it's it's a, it's a vigil question. it's a vigil bit yeah it, it's visual so do y'all have it pulled up yeah you're sorry i mean it, to say it to say it properly a vigil bit there we go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what, choose your favorite. Now, these are old school cereals, so I'll go through them real where's quick. This, where's real this quick. Uh, Podcast questions and, and just hit pen questions. This is from AKA Dear, Dear Dad. I don't know if I specified that, but uh, G.I. Joe, Barbie, C-3PO's, Dunkin' Donuts cereal, Batman, Bill and Ted's, Pac-Man, something junior. I can't even read. What oh, the hell Donkey is Kong Jr. Oh, Donkey Kong Jr. Mr. T., Ghostbusters, E.T., and I can't read that one. Crunchy either. Stars. Crunchy Stars. Crunchy Stars. Um, I wouldn't eat any of that stuff. Uh, well, I'm going to go with C-3PO's because your taste buds can't um, defy flavor of that magnitude. I, yeah, I went, I went <laughs> Ghostbusters on this one. Yeah, I've always been a big Ghostbusters fan. Some person named Hazelnut. Guy sounds like a moron. <laughs> he sounds like an idiot. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, first time listener, long time caller, uh, there can only be, <laughs> there can only be one Gambit or Gambit Prime. Gambit Prime. Gambit Prime. Get Gambit out of here. So, Elmer, you weren't in our Discord today, but uh, Burning wow. Wing Wait, actually po Fine. posted a video of a last second comeback in Gambit that I don't think that you could do in Gambit Prime. Which makes me conflict. I know Gambit Prime is is the way to go, but you kind of take your hero moments away, right? No, no. Uh, it's it's a tug of war. Think of it as a big giant tug of war. I mean, regular Gambit or Prime? Uh, Prime, Prime. Are you see so, when you? Yeah, Prime. <clears throat> that goes back to the the gun to the head question. Like, 
do you want the gun on your nuts for eight minutes or four minutes? Yeah, good point. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I guess. I guess you're right. I guess you're right. Another one from some dude named <laughs> Hazel. Uh, big fan of the show, guys. Keep it, keep it up. If this thing takes off, <laughs> you go into the stratosphere. <laughs> what two writers would you want? I'll post a link uh, so Gator doesn't have to do too much. So, oh yeah, a writer. So a writer demand is if you're famous and so like you're going on the road. Um, what crazy demands would you make? Either one of y'all have any ideas about like crazy, like jelly beans or, or something just bananas. What, but or not literal bananas, but you know what I mean? Yeah. So like just something like weird that you demand on the road all the time. Say you're yeah. a, a, a guest of a famous podcast and you're famous. What are two okay. writers that you're going to have to have while you're waiting to get on the show? <laughs> like in the green room. I what got, I, I, I got an answer for this. It's simple. Yeah. Uh, Destiny 2 has to be plugged in and ready on, uh, it can be on a laptop, a gaming laptop. That's fine. It has to be up and ready with my characters loaded and ready to go. I need, I need a big tub of Twizzlers next to it where it's, it, if it gets, if it gets even close to empty, it needs to be refilled manually. That's my two demands. And you know okay. what? You just gave me an idea. What I want is right outside of my trailer. Right when I walk up to the door, I want a small glass of... 12 year scotch, a cigar, uh, a light cigar, nothing too much. Mm -hmm. Take a drink, take a puff. Then I want to walk in and I want the best gaming PC ready, just ready to go. I like it. Yeah. Very refined. Um, let's see here. Probably a gun to my nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I, how did I know you were going to say that? Oh like, I knew it. Just, I just knew and it. then a toothbrush that's been pre-wet with toilet paper on it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I mean, it's the obvious choice. Oh, man. Okay, so we, we still have a mountain to climb, so let's start getting through these. Uh, okay. Jaren, 420. No, we can, so we can skip, we can oh, yeah, skip we that can one. Skip that one. Because that's for Hazel. We'll, uh, we'll add that Claire next Knight week. Asks, question for the podcast. What is your favorite pasta, and how do you prefer it prepared? And why is it never going to be Bavetta? Who the hell even heard of this pasta type? Damn. Dad bot asking for a friend. <laughs> uh, I mean, an inside story on Dad bot. Uh, one of our illustrious members of our Discord wanted me to try to add Dad bot, and another person added an easy, quick link to invite him to our di Discord. Oh, he wreaked havoc God. all morning. He wreaked havoc. It was bad. Anything somebody said, Dad bot would kick in and go, "Oh," he would say whatever they said, and then say, "Hey, I'm Dad." And I was like, okay. I wrote a message in there and I said, I'm sorry, guys. Dadbot can't talk right now. <laughs> <laughs> so he was uh, he was gone. Favorite pasta. Do y'all have a favorite pasta? Oh, oh yeah. Do you when you eat pasta? Oh, Ooh. absolutely. It'd be angel hair pasta with but a really good quality meatball and nice, just, just a nice light sauce. Oh, man. That's the way to do it. Just melts in your mouth. So I, I struggle with a, a fettuccine Alfredo and, and spaghetti. Both of those I, I love. I, mean, I love pasta, really. Oh, I, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, I just don't think it – it doesn't matter what kind of pasta. I think it's all about the sauce that makes the flavor. Mm -hmm. So I like fettuccine mm -hmm. and red sauce. So I had this um this ravioli stuffed pasta where the, the ravioli shell was made of spinach and it had this white sauce on the top. Ooh, oh, mm -hmm. that was so good. That sounds delicious. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go with that. Scumdeath asks, a uh, question for the podcast. Is Uncle Scumdeath going to get arsehole at the <laughs> MotoGP this weekend? Oh, uh, 100% yes. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, I say yes. Absolutely. Elmer Fudd asks, why are you so perfect in literally every way, Fudd? Uh, I think this is a question for you, Fudd. Wow, that's uh, really nice of you to ask that, Elmer Fudd. Um, why, why are you so perfect in literally every little way? You know, in the words of Lady Gaga, I was simply born this way. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> uh, Hazelnut, I'm starting a rumor that war warlocks are trash and they need cheat codes like charging grenades and skull of the dire Ahamkara to make people use them. Of the host on tonight's show, who has the hairiest ass? <laughs> I feel I'm being targeted here. I might have to. I'm not about to file a complaint. 
HR. HR. I, I think sure I'm, I'm. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to talk to HR tonight. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, let's. I mean, just to you know, respect the wishes of the listener. I think what the best thing we need to do is I'll take a picture of our ass and put it in the group DM so we can then judge. Oh God. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll do we'll do that. Oh, yeah. Like right, yeah. Here, let me get my. Hold on, guys. Let me get my. No, no, no. We'll do it after the show. After. No, I got it over here. Hold on. <laughs> He's way too excited about this. This is this is concerning me deeply. There we go. Yep. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Oh man. Oh, oh, oh Golly, damn, that is hairy. Uh, you win, you dude. You win. win. I'm bowing well, to I you. Did. I'm bowing to you right now. <laughs> you win, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. Well, thank you. Oh, Perfect in every way. The, <laughs> yeah. can't see the forest through the trees. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's it's an adventure, you know. Wow. Just looking at you. Okay. Um, Claire and I would ask, follow-up question, have you always used the name? Okay. You know what? That is for next week. Okay. Uh, okay. Question for Elmer from Clear Knight. Out of the gaming community, pick your biggest and most favorite bromance. Whew. Yeah, I putting you, putting you on the spot right there. I'm not it? gonna I'm not gonna call a bromance that I'm currently entangled in because that wouldn't be fair to my other lovers. Um, oh, that's a tough. Qu- There's a lot of really good bromances out there. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you can even answer this one. Just, I mean, just in the Destiny community, like. It's it's just a never ending pile of bromances. <sighs> yeah, there's no good answer to all of them, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Arisen Phoenix asks, "What can we expect to see Fud's first Twitch sings album?" <laughs> Absolutely, I want to know when this is. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I guess after we do that a few more times, we'll, we'll put that together for you. Okay. And then no one will ever want to listen to that, nor should they. Oh my god. Wow. But that is so, a thing. So aka Gear Dad asked the next one. We kinda answered it already, uh, but you're more than welcome to chime in. Have you guys been able to try out playing on different platforms? How are you liking it? Uh like I said, I played on Xbox and it feels just like PlayStation Four. I mean I already played on two different platforms, so it felt good. Yeah, it, it felt nice to get on uh PC this morning before work and do some bounties and some planetary stuff. It was nice to see the the field of view and stuff. It's really nice. Man, another one for FUD. I mean, I should have called this FUD's questionnaire. So, Agent H asked, as a fan of Daffy Duck, I have hmm. to ask, duck season or rabbit season? Well, um, first off, it's duck season or wabbit season. Um, very oh, important. Okay. okay. You know, if you could fact check before you ask a question, I really appreciate that. <laughs> I'll do my best. I blame Hazel. And uh, secondly, honestly, it's whichever one he ends up ending on before he gets frustrated and says fire. Because it goes either way. But he gets shot every time. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> this yeah. is Laz, right? I'll read it. It's, uh, is it's... there anybody that you won't allow to sit on your lap? Ooh. Uh, is that what... directed at me or is that just general? That that's that's to you, Fud. Okay. Oh, is that to Fud as well? And can I can I just add? Well, uh, thank you for letting yeah, me and okay. Hazel sit in your lap last time. My thighs were very happy. <laughs> it was a very comfortable experience, I think, for all involved. Absolutely, can't agree more. Um, and to answer the question, um, no, literally anyone is invited to sit on my lap. <laughs> Why don't you just dress up like Santa Claus? Good point. Um, why don't you just keep your opinions to yourself? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, <laughs> you got me to snort! Damn it! <laughs> All right, uh, golly! Don't worry, I'll edit Elmer it out. Fudd. Here we go again. I, I, I'm telling you. Yeah, did, bring it. Did Elmer Fudd ever catch that pesky wabbit? And hey, wabbit look, with a W. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Uncle Scum. That comes from Uncle Scum. Scum, you are so smart, dude. And no, to this day, uh, it is still an attempt in progress. Uncle Scum, again, <laughs> he's got a couple more in here. Wow. What is this weirdest thing you ever stuck your finger in? Hmm. <laughs> I don't even want to know. This is a thinking one. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I've put my finger in some weird things. I don't know. I, I don't know if I have an answer for this, and if I do... And if my wife ever listens to it, I'd, I'd probably, I'd plead the fifth. I, um, I mean, you could, I mean, just easily cop out and say your own mouth because the human mouth is a very weird thing. But, um, I put my finger in a chicken's butt once. 
<laughs> did you did you think it was a wabbit? Uh, no, um, I, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> I, uh, no, <laughs> so I was I was very young. I'm like barely walking, and was visiting a family friend who had a farm, and I did not realize that chickens had buttholes, and I had no idea what it was. And so, obviously, when you're that age, you just put your finger in it to find out. <laughs> uh, I I had to. Uh, <sighs> my dog ate something plastic, and I had to reach in and get it out. Ooh. So yeah, that happened. Ooh. And and it's Have weird. You guys made eye contact since. Uh, <laughs> that dog is long past. But uh, I had to once I got in there and got a hold of it. It took a while to pull it all out. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> God, man, this is so disgusting. <laughs> thank, thank, again, again, I think the Fosters is flowing over there in good old England. So good. So uh, good. Thanks for that question, yeah, Scum. It. What am I doing, birthing a cow? <laughs> God. <laughs> Grugux asks, favorite cartoon as a kid? I would have to say mine was uh, either Transformers or um, Battle Cats. Not Battle Cats. Oh, my goodness. I already forgot what it was called. But y'all go. SWAT cats? No, oh. no. What was the? Uh, he's he had real tall red hair. Woody. I'll Wood. look it up. Woody yeah. Woodpecker. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> okay. So I'll I'll go with Transformers for now. For me, huh. it's uh, easy. It's it's Tom and Jerry. Ooh, good choice. It's old school. Favorite cartoon? I might actually go with SWAT cats. That was fun. I watched that every week. SWAT cats was a great show. Okay. What was SWAT cats? I don't remember what that was. Well. Um, they were cats, right? And um, they were in SWAT. Oh, okay. You SWAT know what I was, cats. I was thinking of Thundercats. Oh, oh I, remember, I remember that one. Yeah. No, yeah. they like they were like a I don't know like a world saving organization thing, and they had like these cars that transformed into robots. They sat in, and went and saved the world, and they looked oh, adorable. Nice. Uh, Pepsi or Coke? Scum, scum, ask again. Pepsi or Coke? I say Coke. There is only one. It's Coke. Ooh, I'm a, I'm a Pepsi guy. <laughs> so even if, like if I'm at a restaurant and I ask for a Coke and they say Pepsi, is Pepsi be fine? I go, no, I'll take no. the water. Yeah. I won't exactly. even drink Pepsi. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. No, I'll have, I'll have iced tea. That's depressing. Um, I don't know. Oh, actually, I would like to change the previous answer, though. It would be gargoyles. Oh, yeah. oh gargoyles. <laughs> That's good. That's good, too. Um, Fluffy Fingers asks. If you had a package, a package, and the prettiest packaging to deliver a package via postal package truck, how big of a vape cloud would Xanafan be blowing? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, sorry, I don't know you Xanafan yet, so I will defer to the other two gentlemen. Well, this was Ooh, the you fun. Should. This was the fun. Xanny's incredible. Fudzy X. Get a chance to know him. He's okay. Dude. Yeah. Will do. Oh. Brother, though. Wow. They're, they're both <laughs> awesome, dude. Hate that guy. Um, <laughs> this next record goes out to Dip in Malone. It's yeah. titled, I won't say it on this podcast. <laughs> uh, a very, very large vape cloud. I've seen, I've been in video calls with one Xana fan 7 Eleven, and a vape cloud will happen where you cannot see anything else in the room. <laughs> really? Wow. That sounds like talent to me. The largest of the vape clouds. Wow. So, uh, next one, Laz, as per the quote from the recent Just Some Guardians episode. <laughs> Speak of the devil. <laughs> this is the question we just answered. When will we see the first smooth jazz album from Detective Ben Malone? And will it be titled My Twin Luke Smith? <laughs> I hope so. That would be awesome. That'd be incredible. I, I like, honestly, I think Ben could pull off an insanely smooth, like, jazz album. Absolutely, dude. Okay, we've got five more to get through here. Um, wow, we're doing pretty good. Okay. Yep, Scum, Scum Death Ass. Who's your favorite comedian? Uh, man, that's a toss-up for me. I'll have to think about it. Who Who is y'all's favorite comedian? Oh, man. Well, you guys think about it. I have an easy answer. But I watch a ton of stand-up, and I've gone to a lot of stand-up concerts, and my all-time great would be Dave Chappelle. Yeah, his first that two stand very good choice. I don't know if you've Excellent. seen I don't know if you've seen his latest Netflix. It's like a two parter. Man, it's so thought out. I mean, there's a ton of good ones. George Carlin, uh, you know, Seinfeld. I've gone and seen a lot of in fact I'm going to see Nate Bergazzi uh in a few months over at uh over at Universal. There's so many good comedians. It's I'm glad it's coming back. I really am. That's a great question. As there's so many great comedians out uh, there. Uh Elmer or Fudd? 
God, this is, do you have one? I'm like, God, it's so many. So again, so like the James Bond question, I, I, I don't feel like there's a consistency level where I just like one over the other. I'm, I mainly pick like specific stand-ups, but maybe top three, obviously, uh, Eddie Murphy raw was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I thought, uh, Oh, I can't remember it, but the, uh, Jamie Foxx, where he goes to Africa, where he's dressed like Michael Jackson. It's absolutely oh. hilarious. I, I can't remember what the name of it is. I'll, I'll, I'll post it. And then uh, Dave Chappelle. I yeah. felt like that Dave Chappelle, the first one, was mm-hmm. hilarious. Yeah. Um, I, I guess those are my top three stand-ups. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I could probably do a top three. You'd go Jim Gaffigan, the guy kills me, uh, Bill Burr, and then Brian Regan. Oh, man. My top three. I forgot about him. I've seen him in concert, too. Oh, nice. Man, nice. so yeah. many good ones. They, what, it's, it's like a... I mean, each one's its own, like, what kind of mood you're in. Because Bill Burr, you're not always in the mood for that. Two from Drafty. Uh, okay. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck? Wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck had as much phosphorus as Uncle Scum Death? <laughs> Did you see that, um, uh, you see all, that giant case? All of the wood. He had a giant case of it today. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, so what's your favorite Weird Al Yankovic song? Beat it, Ooh. beat it, eat it. Yep, yeah, eat it's good. Oh, that's a tough one, man. I I do think eat it is pretty funny. Yeah, it's like there's so many good classics. Some of his newer ones like really kill it. Um, mm-hmm. the Handyman's well, I'm so handy was brilliant. One of his yeah. newer ones, but it has to be I think probably the saga begins. We did the whole plot of the of episode one of Star Wars. Wow. Oh, to American yeah. Pie. Oh, yeah, yeah. We did do that. Interesting. I think that might be the best. Okay. Chris3711, uh, what's your favorite board game as a kid? Connect Four and Battleship count. Hmm. Risk all day, every day. Really? Yeah. Because that was that's almost like an RPG video. Yeah, game. it kind of set yep. you up. Oh, I love Risk. Uh, For me... Battleship takes a close second, by the way, because I love that game too. But there was that a was game. Good. There was a game called Dark Tower. You had a spinning tower in the middle. Ooh, Remember that game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did we just Ooh. become best friends? <laughs> <laughs> yep. I didn't think. Podcast into bunk beds. I didn't think anybody would know that. Awesome. Yeah. So I didn't play a lot of board games as a kid. One of my favorites uh, was would either be. Uh, does Hungry Hungry Hippos Yeah, count? yeah, that counts. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's a board game. Um, or, or do y'all remember this this game called Mousetrap? Yes, that was uh-huh. a great game, oh, too. Mousetrap, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Mousetrap. It didn't last very long. But... Uh, follow-up question, a.k.a. Gear Dad. This is the last one. Have any of you ever officially finished a game of Monopoly? My answer is yes. No way. We'd all be pissed at each other by the time someone owned all the properties. And every time we walked across and we owed like uh, two thousand dollars, forget that. We I never finished a game. People will just throw their money at the board and go, "I'm out." It's four in the morning, Grandma. You win. <laughs> Good quote. Um, I have finished a game of Monopoly, and it also finished a relationship. Wow, that's <laughs> deep. So y'all were just finished. Wow. Okay. Um, I, I wish I'd finished, you know, but. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is getting late anyway so that oh, that, uh, that wraps up our uh, question segment I just yeah. want to say again thank y'all so much for sending stuff in I mean it, it, I hope that, that y'all are able to get out what we what we get out of it we love reading the questions even if there's 40 something to go through that's so um, insane I've never that, seen that in my life so our our, uh, our goal is to like I said in episode zero we want to share our stories and we want to share your stories as well through um, being on the podcast and by your questions and, and by everything that you, that you contribute. So keep up the good work out there and, and keep them coming, man. We love them. Yeah. I have to second that. Uh, this is the one part of the show we really look forward to. I mean, you guys can go and look at the TWAB 
but this is the part where we really can connect with our community and uh, just just want to remind you we have a we have a channel in our discord called podcast questions if you have any questions for next week's show start putting them in early it's fun gives us a chance to do mm-hmm. our research you know and uh i do put out a tweet that the morning of if anybody wants to answer the tweet is it the tweet is it the did i say it right Tw- tweet okay <laughs> You almost said that really wrong. Oh, I came close, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so think about this. What, what is, what is tweeters plural? Uh, in that what in that what what they put on speakers so you can hear high pitches. <laughs> nice. That's what nice. I thought it was. <laughs> All right, we got to get moving, guys. Hey, thanks, Fud, for being a good sport and answering these tonight, man. I appreciate it. Oh, thanks, Fud. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I knew you could do it. I'd give anything to fight a worthy opponent like you. Someday. So now it's time for our Guardian Down playlist picks for the week. And, uh, 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 yeah, I'm I'm sorry, what? Hazel? What'd you say, Hazel? (laughs) Oh, we we can? (laughs) Uh, We can each get another song because you're not going to be here to pick them? Oh, hell yeah. Okay, guys, get to work. We got one more song we got to get real quick. Oh, Jesus. Hold on. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. I, th- I think um, I think, <laughs> I think I have uh, something here. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, no. I already had a backup, so I'm, I'm good. Oh, okay. Jesus. Wow. You put me on the spot. Well. Uh, yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Just search for Guardian Down Playlist on Spotify. That's where we have it. And I'm going to start with FUD. Hey, that's me. You okay? Um, song one. Uh, anyone who has uh, been around me for a while, gamed with me, or tuned into my stream knows it's a song that I did not realize I sang the chorus to all the time until people pointed it out, and has now become my theme song. And that is uh, Big Mountain's version of "Baby I Love Your Way." Very nice. Nice, nice. Ooh, baby, I love your way. <laughs> <laughs> That is actually pretty good, Fud. That'll be in my head all day tomorrow. I can already imagine it. Yep. Sorry about that. And uh, my second pick, if you get the chance to listen to this song, if it just comes around in the the playlist, you know, just listen. But if you have the chance to just sit down, put some nice headphones on, and close your eyes, and just listen, this isn't isn't a joke pick or anything, like, legitly, like, take a moment and just embrace this song. Uh, It's called Ghost Love Story by Nightwish. It is a um, orchestral metal song with uh, an operatic singer, and it's incredible. Very nice. Okay. Oh, oh and we had a third pick, huh? Yeah, you, you got one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I went with Detroit Rock City by Kiss. Oh, that's a classic. And the reason I did this, so me and a few friends are playing D2. Uh, we have a bot in the Discord where we can just type in songs and it'll just play it, just in our, in our little voice chat. And we've discovered... That any time there's a jumping puzzle, or we do the um, the the ascendant challenges, okay, and we're trying to go for the the, the time restraint. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Detroit Rock City will get you through anything. <laughs> that song starts and you're just killing aliens to that. Oh, the baseline. It, it is so. You get to listen to the song while you're in like a big fight in in Destiny. that feels good. It'll get you pumped. Oh yeah. Good picks, man. Good picks. Easy, your turn. So song number one is a band called Lydia. The song is called Friends, and it's on the Liquor album. Um, it's kind of a new age, emo, rocky, poppy mix, uh, but I like it. So second song is a DJ by the name of Bonobo, and his new single is Linked. Uh, you know, one of when we were doing our opening when we were going through the different opening songs, uh, Gator, mm-hmm. it was one of the selections that oh. I had picked yeah. before I realized that you can't copyright, so um, yeah, it didn't get picked. So, uh, But he's got some really mellow stuff. He's He uses uh, a lot of instruments mm-hmm. in, his, in his mixes where you'll get like uh, winds or cellos or... or uh, raw drums or i mean he just brings it all in it, it's it's a great it's a great sound and then song three is dance gavin dance is the band uh midnight midnight crusade is the song 
and it's on the album Artificial Selection. And it's just kind of a, a again, it, like a, a new rock, I don't even know what you call it, where you get a little bit, it's heavy, you get a little bit of harmony, you get a little bit of screaming. Hmm. It's just kind of a mix of everything. So it, it's it's really good, though. I'm, I was surprised that I ended up liking that whole album. So Nice. Has that... Has that song been in anything that like I don't know why that sounds familiar? Uh, not that I know of. Okay, um, but it's I'll it's yeah, it's it's really good. I I enjoy it. Nice, nice picks, nice picks, guys. Uh, I'll start off with Twenty One Pilots, Nico and the Niners. It's from the new Trench album they have coming Ooh, out. Oh, nice! I love nice. Twenty One Pilots, man. I, I they have so such a good variety of music, and uh, it's it's kind of I would call it alt nation kind of music, alt rock. Uh, really good. You got to listen to it. And uh, Jack White's band, The Raconteers. Uh, help, oh, yeah. Help Ooh. Me, Help Me, Stranger is this one. This is off the Help Us Stranger album, which I believe is a new album as well. And my last pick is kind of a sentimental one. This is the most underrated band, I think, in this last decade. And the group is called Elbow. And if they. Oh. Dude, I've got a buddy that swears by this band. Think, he, think he, of. He's been pushing them. Oh. It's it's gorgeous I, music. For years, I yeah. I dare I mean, you to listen to this song and not just get swept up in it. It's so beautiful right. a song, and it's from the Little Fictions album. It's called Magnificent, or she says. And uh, this think of think of Elbow is like the new version of Peter Gabriel. Think of that voice. It's so good, man. The lead singer is just so well, right. so good. So that right now, the, yeah. The album Little that my buddy was was really pushing was. Um, the seldom seen kid. Okay. It came out in 2009. Yep. Uh, and he was, he was really high on them. So I, I need to go back and, and give him a listen. Hey, good, uh, good picks tonight, guys. Really solid. Yeah, picks. I just, I just jumped through a few sections of this song. That's sounds amazing. It, it's actually. beautiful. That, that elbow. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Magnificent. I've never heard of elbow. Magnificence. They're opening. Yeah. It's their opening song to little fictions, but little fictions is one of their newer albums, but they have a brand new song out. They have a brand new album coming out, so look that up too when you're on uh, or iTunes or whatever your okay your yeah, choices. Do they have a brand new yep, album coming out, sure. so uh, yeah. I, I I don't promote people unless I'm just so believe in their music. And this guy, this this group is so underrated. Well, thanks guys, I appreciate it. That yeah, l- ladies and gentlemen, I think we've come to the end. I think we're done. Do we have Do we have to? I know, man. I know it's it's been a ball. I've had such a great time. I just wanted to thank you again, Mister Elmer Fudd. You have been a oh, yeah. You have been just I lo- a- love me some laughs, and I felt like yes. that that was a consistent message throughout this whole podcast. I appreciate it, bud. Yeah, very much. That so was, that was beautifully worded. Thank you, man. Yeah, I'm a podcast whore, so literally any time. <laughs> okay, good enough. I'll, I, good to hear. I've been on many a show where literally last second. Hey, um, what do you think? Yeah. So yeah, anytime. Well, we appreciate Sweet. you. This is a long episode. I, I know you guys are hanging in. I really appreciate it. So uh, speaking of which, Elmer Fudd, how can people yeah. how can people get a hold of you, man? Well, with your arms. Good point. <laughs> but it, <laughs> let's say they want to contact you. <laughs> how well, would they talk to uh, you? Via your phone. Here is my number. No, <laughs> I already I'm got not ninja. I'm not going to give you all my number. Well, first of all, the podcast, Just Some Guardians. Um, I'm a host on that show. Come check us out. We're on Twitter, JSGCast, iTunes, Podbean, Spotify. Come check us out. It's a good time. Um, and as for myself, uh, Twitter and Twitch and YouTube at Elmer Fudd Games. Double M, double D. I was waiting for that part. <laughs> that's awesome. <sighs> and that's it, man. That's where I am. Good deal. Good deal. And in Easy's heart. That, nice. that you are correct, sir. You can find me at Easy Pooty on xbox uh bdg 0210 on ps4 and on the on, on the twatters <laughs> <laughs> the twitter the twittersville <laughs> you, you can you can find me at uh uh basso va22 vasova 22 you can contact me on the twitter <laughs> At Todd the Gator, my <laughs> at Todd the Gator. My gamer tag is G A T R all caps underscores on PS4 and now on Steam. 
And uh, I do have a new gamer tag on Xbox uh, now that we've done cross save. It is Gator, all caps, G A T R, space, G D C for Guardian Downcast. Uh, you can also reach us at email us at guardiandowncast at gmail.com. We have a Discord as well. Just search for Guardian Downcast, and I will post a permanent invite link in our show notes. Uh, this is so awesome, guys. I had a great time. Thank you, Mr. Elmer yeah, Fudd. So I had an incredible fun. time. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you all very much for listening, and later, Guardian. Later. Mwah. Kisses. There's just something about like like a gun barrel right against your nuts. It just does it for me. In the words of Lady Gaga, I was simply born this way. Unknown to me, I had gas. Do you want the gun on your nuts for eight minutes or four minutes? I shit myself in an elevator. The best thing we need to do is I'll take a picture of our ass. My thighs were very happy. It's four in the morning, Grandma. You win. What the fuck is going on here? What the fuck is going on here? <laughs> you got me to snort, damn it. Double M, double D.